What do you do when you get counterpicked? Well, the answer is not necessarily to counterpick the counterpick all the time, especially if you actually want to improve the character that you're playing and or you actually enjoy the character that you're playing. Overwatch can definitely feel like counterwatches sometimes. However, the ability to counterplay the counterpick is one of the most important skills you can learn in Overwatch no matter what character you're playing, whether that's Zenyatta, Mercy, Wrecking Ball, Genji, or anything else. In this video, we're going to be going over a surface level guide on how to counterplay your counter picks, going over my SWAT video counter picks, where I talked about all the hard and soft counters of all the characters in Overwatch 2. This is a pretty in detail guide in terms of that we go over every single character besides Malga. However, this is a relatively surface level guide to counterplay. There's obviously a lot of details that we could go even more depth on. Um, we don't really have time for those in this video. So if you feel like I missed any major ones, please let me know in the comments. But if you're looking for a good general guide on how to play around your counter picks, this is going to be the best place to be. Now, crucially, we don't talk about Malga in this video because I feel like Malga is going to be having a lot of changes coming in the future, and I didn't want to go too in detail on that. However, uh, I will tell you right now that the way to counterplay your counter picks as Malga is... I don't know, the character design just sucks. Um, and if you're trying to counterplay against a Malga pick as a DPS of support, don't really worry about it. He doesn't really bother you too much. Uh, but as a tank, your solution is avoid him and avoid him and avoid him more. Maybe if you're Orisa Fortify, make sure that you don't take an engagement without fortifying him. But yeah, just avoid the guy for the most part. There's a couple other details, but we're not gonna really talk about Malga today for the most part. So um, obviously that might be something we do in a future video. But anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. As I said, this is a relatively surface level guide to counterplaying your counter picks. And you might find yourself enjoying the game a little bit more, feeling like you have a little more agency in what you can do. Enjoy. Let's talk about counters here. We'll start with uh, Wrecking Ball, actually. So yeah, we actually start with Wrecking Ball. Um, so <sighs> what we'll do is just to be very clear is this is going to be because we talk a lot about the guide to Overwatch you counters and soft counters and hard counters. If you haven't seen this video already, it's a bit of a big chew, but it is really important. You can at least skip around and get the intro. Basically, the idea is that soft counters are characters that make you have to make significant adjustments to how you play, whereas hard counters make it so that's almost impossible to play. Uh, you can't. You have not only have to make significant adjustments, but it's also very difficult to play into. So, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to give you the chasm level. This is how to play versus every single hero. I'm going to give you the short TLDR that as an average player, low rank player, even a high rank player starting to learn the character, you at least have a checklist of what you should be looking for. Um, so let's talk about Wrecking Ball first. So Wrecking Ball is definitely one of those characters that we that has a lot of soft counters. There's a lot of things that, that can counter him. The soft CC, uh, the hard CC, uh, even just the burst damage in general can be very, very difficult. The key thing with Wrecking Ball when playing at your counters is really to revisit your fundamentals first off to make sure that your timing is really, really, really good, uh, that you're never ever going in by yourself at, without your team at least soft pressuring. Because even if you do die because they have so many soft CC, you want that to cost the enemy team resources. Like uh, The other thing as well is that if you go in at a good time, they're less likely to be putting all those resources on you. So the key thing is one of the fundamentals. But the other thing that you need to consider with ball, and this is something that I spent a lot of time coaching, especially in my higher ranked ball players, is that it's the um, downtime for uptime. Downtime for uptime. You want to actually screw this. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to pull up Overwatch so I can actually demonstrate some of these questions. So what I mean downtime for uptime is a lot of ball players get obsessed with like going in and slamming and then shooting, and then shooting some more, and then rolling through again, and then slamming. And the problem with that is once you bait people's attention with Wrecking Ball, you're gonna, they're going to stay locked in you for quite some time until you give them some other reason to look elsewhere. Because you're really big, you're really fat, and especially if they have soft CC, they're going to be focusing you down. Um, in fact, they probably swap for that soft CC to counter you. And so what a lot of balls fail to do is they fail to utilize downtime. And the reason why that's important is because if you fail to utilize downtime, you will get yourself killed. So here's how it works. You're going to go ball, and you're going to go through. All right? And they're going to go Sombra, Cassidy, right? What you're going to do is you're going to do the softest engage that you could possibly can. Either that's going to be peeking out and shooting to bait their attention, shooting, uh, rolling through, right? Another one is just generally slamming and then rolling through, right? So you engage with one cooldown out with the other. And you don't even stop and shoot, really. You just go through and go right through. And there's one of two things that's going to happen. 
One is best case scenario, two is bad, worst case scenario. One is they're gonna give you cooldowns. They're gonna throw cooldowns at your way, but because you're just going in and out super quickly, you have way higher chance of actually living that cooldown, avoiding it, dodging it, or just straight up, even if you do tank it, you live it, all right? Because you're just immediately out. You're not exposing your head, hitbox, you're doing nothing. The other thing, which is the, I gotta turn this down a little bit. The other so the thing is the worst case scenario is they don't use the cooldowns, but they look at you. Still value. They're gonna do damage to you. And this is where the recent ball changes have really been important. Because you have shields now. You're gonna roll through, they're gonna shoot you, they're gonna give you attention, you're gonna roll out, and you're gonna chill, you're gonna get your cooldowns back, you're gonna regenerate a little bit of your HP, and you're gonna go in again. And you're gonna shoot, shoot, ooh. And then you're gonna go in again. Do you guys get what I'm saying when I'm saying downtime for uptime? Because you're managing the amount of damage that you're taking, and you're not really going all in, you're allowing yourself to kind of go in and then 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 in, ultimately actually increasing your total amount of uptime because the only time you really cash out is when they've used those cooldowns or your team is hard committed or you see somebody low. So the key thing with ball and encounters is to not full engage, not just because you don't want to die, but because the amount of burst damage that you're going to take, that means even if you live, like let's say you slam into this comp and they don't even have CC, but they just burst you down. If you have to run over here, regenerate, grab a mega, roll over here, grab another mega, that is so much downtime. And that's what so many ball players miss. You really have to utilize downtime for uptime. So a little bit of tickle, a little roll through, a slam that a roll through, a distraction, harassment, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, utilizing that shields, utilizing your ability to grab a health back here and there, utilizing your downtime to get your cooldowns back in so that your overall uptime will be higher and your chance of death is a lot lower. Soft engages, yes. There's downtime for every tank, but Wrecking Ball can have larger downtime because when he's out, he's out. And the reason why Ball is really good at that is because not only is Ball really good at going in, Ball is really good at going out. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Um, Wrecking Ball, fine. We talked about Wrecking Ball. Doomfist is very similar, frankly. Doomfist is very similar to Wrecking Ball, where, again, it comes down to a timing question um, and not going for a double cooldown engage until you've softened people up. Um, the other thing with Doomfist and Wrecking Ball as well is that the way people will counter you, will they'll often take, uh, they'll often group up, okay? So how many times have you guys played Wrecking Ball and Doomfist and the entire clump of enemy CC just clumps up in one giant ball, right? And they and so you're like, well, how do I even penetrate that? Well, that's where you do your soft engages. You get a you get a five man slam, or or you get a uh, five man slam that roll out, or you just get or you just roll through, or you shoot and distract. Uh, you get a uh, a seismic slam as Doomfist, uh, and then punch out, or you punch in and slam out. You got to get these soft cycles. The good news is is that when the enemy team is grouped up, they are operating at a passive disadvantage. They are doing less damage to your team right now because they're grouped up to counter you. So you might feel like I have less opportunity to actually punish anybody when they're all grouped up. There's no isolated targets, but the good news is there's less need for you to punish everybody when they're all grouped up because they're operating at a disadvantage by not controlling the map. So you do a drive-by, right? You do your drive-by, you utilize your downtime for uptime, you, you harass, you distract, exactly what we're talking with Wrecking Ball, you soft engage, you build that ultimate, you see an opportunity to hard commit, and you finish the kill. You finish the kill. Now, notice that we're not talking about individual characters. I think characters um, like Sombra can be a real nuisance. Um, obviously, there's some characters like Farad that you can't even touch at all. Um, but in the general way of you countering Doomfist, you can still, that's what you need to be thinking about to improve that experience. It's still a difficult, but it's a way you can improve that experience. Operating a disadvantage as a group means that when the enemy team is entirely grouped up, because they are taking no off angles, the DPS and supports are operating at a damage pressure output disadvantage. If the Cassidy is here, the Cassidy is in a bad position to harass your backline or to pressure your DPS. So while you might be operating at a disadvantage, the entire enemy team is operating at a disadvantage, which means that your teammates will have more space to do the things that they want to do. You might have less to do because you're scared of entering the, the horde, <laughs> but your teammates can do more. So soft cycles, downtime for uptime, um, playing around timing very importantly, uh, and respecting the clump as being a disadvantage for you, but an advantage for your team. Those are my tips. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Diva, 
a little similar to Doomfist uh, and, and, and Wrecking Ball. The difference with Diva's counters, a lot of them, um, with the exception of Brigitte, we'll talk about that one in a second, is just about avoiding them as much as you possibly can until you don't want to avoid them. Sorry, without bubbles, if you have full HP, you can absolutely murder her uh, in point blank range. Uh, same thing with May. May without an ice block, May without any consistent support. Very, very easy cool. Uh, very, very easy kill, excuse me. Uh, I know a lot of people obsess about eating their ultimates, which is actually exactly why they're so dangerous. Because what they do is they give you a good reason to play closer to them, and then they kill you, and then they ult anyway. Um, so I, I generally recommend holding off angles, holding high grounds, taking, avoiding these guys, especially when she's charged, especially when she has ice block, and finding angles to get around and harass backlines instead. Um, Brigitte is a bit of a trickier one. Um, she is a trickier support to kill. If she doesn't have shield, you can kill her. If she doesn't have bash, you can kill her. The big thing with Brigitte that makes her hard to play around um, is the fact that you don't really have any counterplay around pack. Uh, so a target that gets pack means that a target that you can't really dive consistently. The good news is that if the target that you're diving gets pack, that means the Brigitte is looking at that target, which means that you might not kill the target, but you're getting a two for one. And the problem with Brig is that Brig can't really kill you. Um, so if you dive a target, and let's say it's a Zenyatta and the Zenyatta Harmony Orbs, that's just as good as an armor pack, almost as good as an armor pack, and the Zenyatta can kill you. Right, whereas the Brigitte is not really going to kill you. So Brig is more of a soft counter because she will stop you from securing kills, but she cannot stop you from securing distraction and pressure. <clears throat> um, okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I don't include Symmetra as a Diva counter since she lost her 225 HP. Because Symmetra is pretty easy to angle on, and she is very squishy uh, and much more killable, I find, than May. Okay, Junker Queen. So, um, Junker Queen is a bit of a tricky one where there's a lot of things that you don't really have a uh, counterplay around. Hard counter, May. You, can't, you cannot get involved. May is a hard counter, especially when paired with another tank um, that's going to have frontline presence. So, Orion plus May, Ram plus May. Zarya plus May, anything that can wall you up and pressure you out, even another Junker Queen in May, gonna be real, you need to really be careful. Now, the good news is that a lot of these brawl your DPS when they don't have cooldowns are very fragile to you. So it's a hard counter with an asterisk with May. Same thing with Reaper, uh, where if it doesn't have Wraith, doesn't have Ice Block, you can kill it uh, very quickly. Um, but you want to generally avoid it, uh, and poke it out, play angles, try to keep your distance, uh, don't uh, stand in the middle of the choke in those situations. Um, Kiriko, uh, you can't really deal with her as an individual, so that's important to note. She can dink you pretty well, uh, and you need to worry about Suzu with your ultimate. So the counterplay with Kiriko, with Suzu, is because Jungle Queen doesn't have a reliable way of forcing Suzu all the time, outside of just playing really good and hitting shots and hitting Gracie's, uh, but that's not a really good tip. So what I would say is the, the counterplay to Kiriko is to try to look for Junker Queen ults where, either, where you can hit multiple targets that are split up. So one of the, you will find success as playing Junker Queen into Kiriko when you hit a Junker Queen ult with targets that are like this. She cannot Suzu all of them. She has to pick and choose. And that's where if you're able to hit m multiple targets that are slightly split, then she she can't Suzu it. And that's that's honestly the more consistent way of looking for it. Um, obviously, Suzu, if you can see it, is great too, but that's that's the key thing here. Um, Ana? Ana's more of a doozy just because Sleep Dart and Nade are really, really difficult to deal with. What I would say with Ana is Ana just punishes lack of cover usage really hard because if it's the cover doesn't really stop you from getting naded because you can get splash naded, but cover will allow you to disengage a fight so that you can recover from being naded more. Um, so you really want to be careful about it. Ana punishes mistakes really hard. Now, Sleep Dart is unfortunately one thing that you can't 100% guarantee like Suzu. Uh, she, if she hits it, she hits it. But you can make it difficult, again, by playing cover well and by timing your ultimate more mid-fight and not just using it right down the middle. Cause a little chaos, fish it out, see if it happens. Um, and again, sleep dart, when you're not ulting, cover, 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 cover. Because you can absolutely hear the sleep dart, react to it. Um, and even if you do get slept, if you're next to cover, you're more likely to be able to live it. So the key things with the, this guy is cover, split targets with your ultimate, don't engage unless you have an advantage. Um, Reaper soft counter, this is more of a mid rank thing qualify where mid rank players will struggle a little bit more. And I think for the lot of the more pokey heroes, so there's one thing that doesn't really fall into the hard counter, soft counter thing. Um, you guys look at like Hanzo, uh, Farah, Zenyatta, Widow, Ash. Those all are the same answer. Very similar to Ana. Cover. Find a way to either get close to them in a sneaky fashion 
or take an angle where they can't see you. So if there's a Widowmaker that's here, you don't have the mobility to reach her over here or the Hanzo or Ash. You just don't. So what you do is you do one of two things. You either rotate around and get on top of them or if the enemy tank is here, you take an angle where they can't see you really and just shoot the tank. Jungle Queen is not bad at tank trains. And so what she lacks that for in mobility, um, she does have some capabilities to win tank trains consistently. Um, so what you do is you would either find a way to rotate under the squishies or you don't pick them at all because Jungle Queen is very fragile with poke damage. Very, very fragile. The other ones, like the Ryan, the Reaper, very similar to the May. You'd want to avoid getting in their face until you have an advantage. Lucio could boop you back. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, I don't think Zarya is 100% always a soft counter, but again, it's like kind of engage the Zarya um, uh, at your, uh, uh, whenever you'd like to. Um, one thing with the Zarya I'd say is like try to poke out the force a bubble, force her out. Really try to avoid carnaging a bubble, that kind of thing. Um, well, the problem is, is that Widow Hanzo are not wasting their time shooting a tank if it's you, because they can kill you. <laughs> uh, they can 100% kill you. Um, okay. Shut up, Anima. <laughs> Okay, Arissa. So Arissa has some of the least counterplay options to the counterplay out of all the characters. So that's the bad news. Uh, you talk about how to play into Azaria. Um, now, since the change, there's a little bit more counterplay because she has slightly better poke damage because she doesn't have the fall off. So your best bet is to try to play like mid-ish range just outside of her beam range so that you can shoot her down. Um, it's not consistent. And if you can avoid Zarya, do so. But that's one option. The other option with Zenyatta is, is kind of similar to the other options where if you can't touch it, don't stand in front of it. So if you can't dive the Zen because he's too far away and you don't have any mobility, don't peek it. And the same thing goes with really all of these characters, right? Um, Sigma is a little bit different, but we'll get to that one in a second. Do not play patty cake with any of these characters. If you can't get to it, you don't you don't play patty cake. Um, Zarya is mostly just playing just outside of her beam range and shooting her down. Like I said, the recent change to her gun, Arissa's gun, has definitely made this matchup a little bit more favorable. Maybe it puts Zarya in a soft counter. I haven't played enough Arissa to know. Um, but yeah. Uh, and Sigma, Sigma is actually a little bit interesting where it's like, uh, you can poke him out at extreme ranges, so just outside of his, his range. That's really, really, really good. Um, you either want to do that, or you want to get up and close in his face um, to, force, uh, to force his shift early, and then rock or fortify his rock. Um, and then you can definitely deal with Sigma. So Arissa is either extreme ranges with Sigma or up in his face because uh, his rock forcing fortify, uh, his shift is really good, his shield is really good, his damage is really good versus you, stuff like that. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Ramatra. Now, Ramatra's received uh, some pretty big buffs recently, so he definitely feels a little bit less bad than many of these characters. Sleep Dart and Aid still really, really messes him up. Uh, sleep dart especially because it cancels the block, which is really his self-sustain. You can live through nade with block, so keep that in mind when you are naded. Even if you're not particularly low, unless you're actually killing something, I would hold block just to make sure that you don't get low. Sleep dart, there's not a lot of counterplay. You need to play cover carefully. You need to try to utilize your shield into your nemesis form. One of the things that you'll see a lot of high-level Ramatras do into Ana is when they're looking to use their nemesis form or their ultimate, is they'll try to use place their shield near the Ana or place their shield near where they want to brawl. So they, they have ways to kind of shield dance in and out of that uh, that shield to deal with the Ana. Same kind of thing deals with the Zenyatta, um, where it's just you can either bait the Discord and then push, uh, or you can use your shield to block the Zenyatta's LOS. Zenyatta is going to be the most important person probably to block with your shield when you're playing into anything, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then obviously, if you can get on top of these guys, it's you're cooking, but you need your shield to be able to do it. Uh, okay, let's talk about soft counters here. So a lot of the soft counters with the Ramatra, there really isn't a good solution. Uh, Echo, uh, Farah, Tracer, even Sojourn to an extent, are not characters that you can really interact with. They're too mobile, they're too hard to track. The best thing that you can do is occasionally if Sojourn miss positions you can punch her echo miss positions you can punch her tracer and so on you can definitely punch her um but really the way to play into a lot of the counters that you can't reach as ramatra is to try and kill the other stuff if you can't deal with them don't worry about it go find value elsewhere and, and i think that definitely applies with a lot of the other things as well mercy as well um bastion's one of the few exceptions i think to this rule because bastion is not a character that can avoid you but also he's a character that can really mess you up bastion definitely should pivot slightly how you use how you view your uh nemesis and your omnic form because bastion choose up your nemesis form. He can't kill you if you block quickly enough, but you will spend your entire nemesis form doing this. The entire. Um, so you need, because you don't have a consistent shield like Ryan, 
uh, and no way to block. And, and it's just not as good as Fortify. You don't have a gun. Um, and, and the punch just does nothing to Bastion, really. It's not enough damage uh, with his armor and his damage reduction through tank mode. So I recommend with Bastion utilizing your Omnic form more if you can. Um, but yeah, no Malga. Uh, yeah, I, I really feel like we, I guess we should go back and talk about if any of these are Malga. Um, I feel like Malga falls into the category. You know what? Let's actually just add, insert this right now. Malga is kind of an X factor here. I'm not inserting Malga in here. I think Malga definitely hard counters a lot of things, but this, the answer to dealing with Malga for most characters is just to avoid him as much as you possibly can. Avoid him as much as you possibly can. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. There's no other really way of dealing with Malga. Um, and, and I guess the only other thing I'd say is with Malga is try to disengage his cardiac overdrive. If he use, does use that, it is a really long cooldown and that is a really strong cooldown. So if you're able to disengage that cooldown, it's, it's good. Mercy soft counter is just enabling the poke characters and because Mercy with a sky character is not a support that you can consider touching ever. Um, so yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll just leave that at Malga for now. Uh, Reinhardt. So Reinhardt. Reinhardt doesn't really have any hard counters directly, but there's a lot of things that can make his life miserable. There's lots of things that can make his life miserable. Um, lots of ways of counterplaying these things, but it's very... Generally, Reinhardt's like one of the characters where like the soft counters are really boring to play into, right? So you, know, you can't really interact with Farah. Life is a doozy to deal with, especially now that you can't fire strike through his freaking... Um, his, his pedal. You, so let's actually talk about these. Farah, you can't deal with it. Don't worry about Farah. Find something else. Kiriko... Uh, you really can't deal with her either. Uh, she's generally going to be positioned too far on angles or too far away to deal with her. I generally would not worry too much about Kiriko either. All right, so those, those two characters kind of fall into the same category. Then let's talk about the characters that all kind of fall into the same category where you could do okay versus them with an asterisk. Okay? Bastion, Rissa, Roadhog, when the stars align, you could deal with them really well. When the stars don't align, you suck. You're done. It's over. Shatter ruins these characters if they don't have a cooldown to deal with it. No damage mitigation for Roadhog, no armor. Melts pretty quickly. Orisa, if she doesn't have Fortify, although she does have that tool to deal with it, dies pretty fast. Bastion dies instantly. Um, your shield can be really good at denying their damage follow-up, and your shield can be really good at denying um, their overall poke value. So Roadhog, Orisa, Bastion want to get in your face. Your shield should be allowed to get you to be able to disengage them. The thing with playing Reinhardt into these compositions it is really going to separate the 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 meh from the good Reinhardt players and how good is their cooldown management. If you have great cover usage and great shield management and you're able to consistently block javelins and hooks and disengage turret forms, disengage fortifies, and so on, you're going to have an okay time. It's not going to be fun playing it, but you'll be okay. You'll survive. You'll provide more value to your team than you think you are. The problem is, is if you make a mistake... And that's where these characters really can ruin you. Arisa can javelin your, your pen, Hog can hook you out of position, then whole hog you, bash and turret just melts you instantly. So what I would say with, with Reinhardt is you need to, if you can avoid these characters and get value elsewhere, do so. You actually have significant superior mobility to these characters, way better mobility. But if you can't disengage these characters, cover, shield management, impactful fire strikes, impactful earth shatters, and if you see an opportunity, impactful pins. Echo is a, a, a good one where it's like maybe a soft counter, but it's not as con she doesn't consistently fly so far away that you can't totally interact with her entirely. Malga, I mean, Malga is Malga. We talked about Malga already. Malga's not going to be on this list. Malga is basically the same thing as these characters right here, but he's harder to avoid. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's talk about Life River because Life River is definitely an odd one. Life River is basically a support that you can never really interact with, but changes how you interact with things. Um, you can't really interact with his Life Grip. The only interaction that you can do with Life River that's really, really important to adjust is do not solo shatter. Do not solo shatter. Um, pen, there's nothing you can do about it. If you hit a pen, he pulls it out, it's fine. Nothing you can do about that one. But do not solo shatter versus a Life Weaver, unless you've seen Grip. It's not a good trade. Uh, try to always either put pressure on the Life to make him out of position uh, or, or force a little Grip or hit a two-man shatter because um, that really sucks. Yeah. Yeah, so no comment on Life Weaver, no interaction, no fire strikes even anymore because consistency uh, and, and yeah. Okay, Roadhog. 
So Roadhog is a tricky one um, where there can be a lot of things that feel really bad in Roadhog, a lot of things that feel really bad playing Roadhog because we love our reworks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, or you could solo crit shatter. I mean, that is true. Unironically, that is true. Okay, uh, so Roadhog. So Roadhog, Anna. <laughs> Sleep dart, uh, the, the free damage that she gets on you, which is not great, but it's something. And, and most importantly, the nade. Um, the best thing you can do versus Roadhog is again going back to the, like how do you play uh, Jungle Queen? Is you you got to be super disciplined with your cover. You got to be do super disciplined with your peaks. A sleep dart and a nade will not kill you as Roadhog if you are on a corner. It will kill you if you're out in the open because you have no way of disengaging that disadvantage. You could get slept and naded, and it is almost impossible to burst you before you can get to cover if you're playing near the cover. It's just almost impossible. Um, you just need to be super disciplined. One of the things that Hog players mess up is that nice is they want to walk forward and take aggression, which is discouraging Overwatch too. You don't do anything proactive. <laughs> um, and it, when you do take proactivity, you just need to be super disciplined moving from cover to cover to cover to cover. I think because we have a character that has so much self-survivability through his vape that people get a very lose a lot of discipline with their positioning. You need to treat yourself like a Zenyatta. You need to treat yourself like a Zenyatta, cover to cover to cover to cover, so that anything happens, whether it's a Discord, a Nade, a Sleep, a Hanzo, a couple of Hanzo headshots, a Rock, a Javelin, that you're able to quickly move to cover and disengage. And the reason why that works well for Roadhog is that while he is a Brawl character, he has enough range with this hook to where he doesn't have to always be in your face to get value. So if you ever find yourself struggling versus an Ana, consider, am I playing too much like I'm just dis, just completely disrespecting the enemy tank, standing in front of the open, just blah, 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 and eat, vaping and whatever. That's probably where your problems are coming from. And really that applies to both the Zenyatta, the Hanzo, the Sojourn, and even to a lesser extent, these characters as well. We could talk briefly about the value here. D.Va um, can deny a lot of your one-shot value, but she but you can you can also hook her a lot and mess her up. So um, just keep that in mind. It's more about like denying your, your hook value and, and your whole hog, which there isn't a whole lot that you can do to deny that. So you just have to deal with it. But then Sigma and Orisa is, is a little bit of a matchup where it becomes, with Sigma, try to put as much shield pressure as possible. Um, try to keep your HP relatively high because both of these CCs are, will kill you if you try to vape at low HP. A rock's not going to kill you when you're full HP. A, rock, a javelin's not going to kill you when you're anywhere near close to full HP. What happens is, especially with the new cooldown change, where it's a longer cooldown. What is it now, Chad? Is it 1.5 seconds? What is it now? When you get canceled, yeah, 1.5. That's going to kill you. That's going to kill you. Is when you get low, you don't vape until late, you get rock, javelin, or slept, and then you die. That's what's going to kill you. So just be very hyper aware of your HP. Um, and these are tanks that you can force your cooldowns out relatively easily. A hook on an Orisa to force a fortify is a great cooldown trade. Uh, you know, forcing Sigma Grasp, breaking his shield quickly. Um, there's the, it, it, Roadhog is not bad in these frontline trades if 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 you play very very well. Um, and that's the key thing. That's the key thing. Keep in mind, Orisa can javelin spin and block your hook as well. Um, although one little detail as well, chat. I, if I remember correctly, if you get sucked into Arissa's ultimate, yes, you get sucked into Arissa's ultimate, whole hog ruins her. Absolutely ruins her. Even though she's fortified, because she can't move, she eats every single pellet. Yeah, so Titan, when you're trying to deal with all these counters at the same time, you're making a mistake. Your job should be to be able to practice dealing with one type of these counters. You're going to notice that, by the way, a lot of these counters kind of fall into like different archetypes of like utilize cover more or avoid them or play around their cooldowns. And you need to practice dealing with different types of counters until, like, if you're playing ball on the Sombra, paying attention to, like, when is she here? When is she there? Soft engaging and so on um, is, is important. <clears throat> Bastion is not a Roadhog counter. Bastion is only, Bastion is, like, the, Bastion is a significantly worse Hanzo when it comes to burst. Reaper, we considered Reaper, but I think Reaper has, gives up, Reaper's screwed by the new hook one-shot combo. Um, and it's, it's difficult to consistently value there. Dragon Queen, I don't find Dragon Queen to be a counter to Roadhog. At, at best, a neutral matchup. Yeah. So you don't worry about trying to counter, deal with your counters all at the same time. Pick one that you want to practice, and then as you get better, you'll be able to do more and more and more. Okay, Sigma. So the bad news with Sigma is that he has some of the least counterplay uh, out of all the options because a lot of the counterplay options for him 
are just simply maintain your distance with Ramatra and Reinhardt until they're lower down. So you need to spam early and often, spam early and often. But if they're really good with cover usage, it can be difficult, especially on certain maps, right? So spam early and often. Um, definitely try to save rock for Nemesis form to force a block. Um, uh, I think same thing with Reinhardt. Blo- rock to, to, to deal with his pin. Even if he blocks it, canceling his pin is really important. Do not block, throw a rock at a Reinhardt that's close to you and has pin because he will pin you and you'll have nothing to stop him. Um, Flux can also be really good versus these tanks. When they push you, you kind of catch the engage. Uh, that could be very useful. And then obviously things like shield does block Earth Shatter and shield does block uh, Annihilation. Um, so something to consider as well. Uh, but yeah, still could be very difficult, especially when paired with a, a Lucio. Okay, these is kind of what I was talking about earlier where it's like, you re- these are really, really difficult to deal with because you can't really interact with them because they're too far away. Um, I guess you could throw in Farah in here as well. Um, and, and you don't have really have a lot of counterplay. The only thing that you need to know is know what not to do. First off, don't put too much attention on a Kiriko or Echo that's spamming you or Farah spamming you from too far away. There's not a whole lot that you can do. Find a target that you can shoot instead. Shield these targets off if you need to. Not a whole lot you can do. Sombra, if you can shoot her to force her Transicator, that's great. Um, but you need to be very careful of your Flux getting hacked and your Shift getting hacked. Um, and that would be good shield placement and honestly, more than anything else, the good timing. So when Sombra's out, that's when you ult. Um, when Sombra has already hacked you, that's when you ult because she can't rehack you immediately afterwards. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's, that's the big thing there. Tricky matchups, uh, but you, 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 there's, there's sk- timing windows. Um, also, EMP, there's no real counter to EMP to Flux, but it's not a terrible trade. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of tanks. If they can avoid the, the Sigma, they do pretty well in the Sigma, but it's more of a map with situational thing. Okay. Winston. So, Winston, 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 Winston. So, we got to love our boy Winston because he has a whole cornucopia. And the vast majority of these counters fall into two categories. Don't peek them or avoid them. Do not peek a Cassidy I mean, really any poke damage. Cassie's kind of a weird one with his current fall off, but like, do not let an echo poke you. Do not peek a Torbjorn. Do not peek a Roadhog. Do not peek a Zenyatta. Um, do not let these characters poke you out. Even a Junker Queen can cause major, major, major issues. Do not peek them. Do not get near a Brig, a Reaper, a Junker Queen, a Roadhog, a Cassidy, uh, a Diva, a Bastion. These are all targets that you need to be avoiding for the most part. Uh, there are windows where Cassidy's vulnerable. I think after roll specifically, or after uh, his, it, not even hinder really, because you have bubble to deal with hinder, but avoid him when he has his roll, uh, it, unless there's no other better target available, because he can fan, roll, fan, um, and, and obviously very difficult to kill. Uh, you need to be careful about how much damage you're taking from poke from a Zenyatta, uh, Echo. Um, the reason I include Echo here, not Farah, is because Echo is a little bit more flexibility, has more flexibility with her movement, so she's a little bit harder to avoid entirely. Um, Brig is not a target that you should always avoid, but Brig is less attractive than other squishies. You can absolutely jump on a Brig. You often will jump on a Brig, but you wish that she wasn't a Brig. You wish she was something else. Brig is the best of the supports to play. Um, yeah. So, same thing with Zenyatta. Like, you're not going to be like, oh, I can't jump the Zenyatta. He's a soft counter. You, you just don't peek the Zenyatta. Land directly on his little smooth robotic head. But do not, do not let him just shoot you prior to that. Um, do not, and same, same thing with Brig. Like I said, just try to not let her whip you. If you are going to engage, try to engage either directly on top of her or directly on top of the support or DPS that she doesn't have LOS onto. Um, Bash is just a mixture of both, really, where Bastion you want to avoid, but also Bastion you don't want to peek because even in his, uh, his I think, sentry form, he still does decent poke damage with his headshots. So Bastion's just all around feels terrible. Diva, okay, so let's actually talk about the hard counters a little bit more in detail. So Bastion, you need to try and play around his turret timing and jump to where he cannot see you. The best case scenario for Bastion is he saves his turret form for your jump, but you jump onto a corner, cover, or a target where he cannot see you. If they're all grouped up, you jump, uh, you know, if they're all like, let's, let's see here, they're all grouped up like this here, right? And you engage here, back over here or over here, right? And Bash and pops his turret form, turns around, and tries to chase you, but you have a little bit of a wall here. That's best case scenario because you get both the turret form for your team 
and you're still serving a distraction and not dying. Um, you want Bastion to try and turret you. You do. You really do. You just don't. You just don't want him to be able to shoot you in the face with it, right? Um, you can also definitely peak Bastions, especially in mid to low ranks. They'll get the turret baited really easy. Uh, so if you like look like you're gonna dive, they'll pop the turret for him. That's something to be aware of as well. Um, but yeah, that's the main one. Now Diva is a little bit different. Where Diva is, you're very much trying to avoid her, but because she's so she has her own form of mobility, she can chase you. So she's not quite as lethal as the Bastion, but she's close and she can chase you. So that's really, really, really annoying. Nothing's more annoying than Diva that marks you. The difference, though, between Winston and Diva, and we've showcased this a few times before, the difference between Winston and Diva is the mobility speed. This is so much faster than what Diva can do, and you need to try and exploit that. You need to make like if I'm playing Diva here. And there's a Winston, and he dives my Widowmaker over there. I'm going to go, right? But because I'm slow and because I'm a shotgun character, I don't even break your bubble that fast until I get close to it. So you need to try and exploit that as Winston. If you're going to try and dive, avoid the D.Va, and then try to make her chase you from a greater distance. So with Bastion, it's about using cover. With D.Va, it's still important to use cover too, but it's more important to try and force her to close distances because again, this imagine having your tank here just going over and chasing, 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 chasing. And by the time she gets here, you're one second away from jump uh, and you're able to disengage. Uh, bronze to diamond, yeah. I'd say bronze to diamond. Um, right, so that, that's the key thing with playing Widow and, uh, Winston into D.Va, which is why, keep, this is why we talk about maps a lot, because if the maps don't allow you to jump away from the D.Va, then the map, it might not be playable. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a really key thing, playing Winston. Uh, the rest of these, there's nothing really unique. Echo is really hard to interact with. Right clicks will be your friend versus an echo, which is useful. Um, Brig is tricky. Not a whole lot you can do about that. I think there's things that you can, the Brig definitely influences when you use your bubble. So you might use your bubble a little bit earlier to avoid the whip shot. So keep that one in mind. Um, do, 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 same thing kind of goes with Zinyana and kick. Just be aware of kick. Tarbaron overload can be really annoying. Uh, Road whole hog will ruin you as Winston. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, roll, we talked about Cassidy's roll. Uh, Junker Queen, the big thing with Junker Queen is you need to be careful of the knife. So uh, this happens to me a lot when I'm playing Winston into a Junker Queen comp, and I'm just not thinking that that Junker Queen is going to chase me. But what ends up happening is like, let's actually go Junker Queen here. What ends up happening is I dive the back line as Winston, and everything's fine and dandy, but the Junker Queen peels, turns around, and runs at me and knives me. And so then when I try to run back to my team, she pulls me back. So let's say the example we talked about earlier, like the Winston dives in. Well, Junker Queen will chase you. She'll shoot you, she'll shoot you, she'll shoot you as you're diving that Widow. She knives you. You start to jump back and she yanks you. Be aware of that. Uh, be aware of that. There's different ways of playing around it. Bubble dancing is the most consistent way. You can also uh, look like you're like you're about to pretend to jump so she yanks it earlier, then jumps out. Um, and then obviously don't face tank at Junker Queen because she'll freaking wreck you. Um, so yeah, just avoid getting in her face. And I think that's mostly it. Reaper is pretty much similar as the Junker Queen. Just avoid him. Avoid him. Um, you can jump a Reaper that doesn't have Wraith. Uh, I think a Winston actually has an advantage in that 1v1 if the Reaper doesn't have Wraith, uh, especially if you get a good bubble, good jump. Um, it, it can be actually a, a very killable target. Um, I, I, I love... Reaper is probably my favorite soft counter to play into because people usually think that that's a, a great swap hard counter to Winston, uh, and usually they don't know how to play Reaper, and then usually I killed him a lot. So, you know, do with that information as you will. <clears throat> Uh, Zarya. So I guess we should probably stop with Zarya because we've been going on for some time. Um, maybe we'll go a little longer. Zarya. So Zarya is hard counter. I mean, it's not a whole lot to say here. You can't solo grab anybody because it gets pulled. Uh, pedal also pulls people out of grab. And the other thing too is that when we talk about like what does a brawl tank want to do, a brawl tank would like to engage with squishies. And if a life weaver is playing on a good map, there's a real chance that you'll never be able to interact with the life weaver the entire game. No damage. You can't even reach him with right clicks because he's too high up on the pedal. You just don't engage him in the entire game. Um, his tree can really, can really. Um, it's a good brawl defensive ultimate as well. So it doesn't necessarily counter grab. It doesn't necessarily counter a full high charge, but it makes your life miserable. Um, so Lifer has so many tools to, to mess you up, um, especially if the map's bad, right? Uh, soft counter. Really a lot of, the heroes that are better in the brawl, right? So Zara has this like hybrid of like pokey-ish, brawly-ish kind of can support dive a little too with bubbles kind of sort of. And what ends up happening is similarly to a lot of the other off tank heroes, Diva being the, the king, is that she really struggles in the solo tank environment. Orion with any sort of uh, brawl support destroys you. May with a ta brawl tank destroys you. Ramatra destroys you. Uh, Winston 
wrecking ball, totally avoid you. You can't even shoot them. So the tank trade that you wouldn't necessarily always mind taking if it's not a brawl thing, oh no, I can't interact with you at all. Um, and even worse, heroes like Winston and Wrecking Ball are notorious at not feeding a whole lot of charge. Um, so unless you hit it in a slam or maybe a mine, you're not going to get a lot of charge from Wrecking Ball. He's just going to stop shooting. And same thing with Winston, but even worse. Um, so yeah, I mean, actually a soft counter here. It's, it's a little bit busted up. And then there's a lot of other DPS characters like Bastion, May, that with the tank support uh, can kill you very quickly. Uh, a May or a Bastion is also not always a bad thing because they are things that you can reach. But if you don't play your cooldowns right, they can kill you. And then there's a whole cornucopia of characters that you cannot interact with at all, both dive and spam. Anzo, Sojourn, Ash, Widow, characters that you just are too far away and will take huge chunks of your HP, are hard to grab, are hard to right click, and sometimes they're even hard to build charge off of because they can selectively choose when and when not to feed your bubbles. They will feed charge, but it's a little bit harder, especially on maps that are sniper maps. Don't even try. And then there's a whole category of characters, uh, even dive characters like Kiriko uh, and Echo, and to a lesser extent Iyari, who can just avoid you entirely and poke you out, take off angles. Uh, and, and and again, that's just a character without a lot of mobility that really, really struggles. So Zarya, Zarya, I would say, has very few situations where Zarya feels really good and a lot of situations where Zarya feels really bad. Um, again, it's not like you can't play Zarya into these. You absolutely can, and you will frequently play Zarya into these. But you need to understand that I need to avoid peeking snipers if I can, unless they're close. I need to try and save both bubbles uh, and play a little bit more distance if they're playing Ryan May. So you need to manage your range, play a little bit pokier versus these heavier brawl characters, um, and then catch their aggression with your bubbles. And then versus these these spammier characters, you need to try to avoid their sight lines uh, unless you're on top of them. Um, maybe feed some charge off of them and then try to engage their tank. And then the characters like Life Hoover, there's really nothing you can do at all besides pressuring and forcing pedal than grabbing or trying to burn gra yeah it's rough uh rock brook thank you um but yeah okay what do you guys think should we stop there or should we keep going should we just keep going should we just keep going should we just bite the bullet and keep going I play Ram and Azaria, poke her out, force a bubble. Your nemesis farm is really is like you can outpoke Azaria pretty easily if she's not charged. Okay, let let let's let's keep going then. All right, I think that it'll be that the tanks are definitely the hardest ones because the tanks are the ones that have to directly deal with the enemy team more, um, so they deal with the worst of the enemy team. So, for example, I freaking hate playing um, like a lot of these characters. I hate playing Genji or Tracer or you know even a Hanzo or Widow into, but I don't have to deal with them as much. So. Yeah. Okay. Ash. Ash is actually a pretty counterable DPS. I think one of the more, more counterable DPS that we'll talk about uh, because she's in this weird position where she's not like a true sniper, um, but she is a sniper-ish because she has like the longest range out of any of the non-hard sniper characters, but those sniper characters offer very little counterplay for her. Um, any Widowmaker sightline, she's at a massive disadvantage. Um, and Hanzo is even worse because you're worse at long ranges. And, and in many ways, he's actually better in close ranges because Storm Arrow just freaking wrecks your life. Um, so I think Ash is like, provides a lot more team value than, than a Hanzo. Uh, Bob is a better ultimate than Dragon. Dynamite's better utility. The positioning stuff, it's easy to hit your shots more consistently. But in the 1v1, generally try to avoid Hanzo um, unless you know that he doesn't have Storm Arrow, he's distracted, or you have your Dynamite. Dynamite is still a really, really good 1v1 tool. Um, I think we have this fantasy of like the Overwatch 1 five-man Dynamites that's just not realistic very often in Overwatch 1, and Dynamite is more consistently used to just win duels. Uh, and that, I think that's really, really important. Um, the reason why Widow is not a hard counter is because Widow is not as positionally flexible as Hanzo. So there's many times where you can take an angle and avoid the Widowmaker's sightlines and still get value shooting tanks or supports. So for example, if the Widowmaker's way back here, enemy team is here. Uh, a Hanzo would see you hiding here, right? And here's here, and you're shooting, pew pewing the enemy. Uh, if you, this is an Ash, by the way, right? And she'd, he'd go, man, screw that. I'm getting up in here. I'm getting dirty. I'm going to beat up on this Ash, right? But a Widow can't really do that. So an Ash can always take an angle that avoids the Widowmaker's sightlines. Um, not always, but often can, which is why I put her in a soft counter. Joy to Beast, I, I'm I'm gonna break you like a, I'm gonna break you like a bad habit. Um, 
Usual dive characters, you know, she is squishy, she is fragile. Their characters are able to close the distance if the map's good. All these dive characters find ways of doing that. The best way to play into dive is there's a couple of things. Everybody knows coach gun to safety. The people that underrated tips, though, are, first off, dynamite is, it's okay to not use dynamite if you know there's a threat of a Genji or a Sombra or so on. Um, even a tracer, right? Not so much versus the tanks, but that can allow you to hold more aggressive angles because the, the dynamite means that you're less scared of these 1v1s, especially if you have any support. Um, but the most underrated tip, this doesn't apply to Sombra, you'll, I'll explain why in a second. The most underrated tip for playing Ash and really any character that's fragile to dive and to dive is to not lose their positioning. So if I'm playing in a Wrecking Ball, I just can't forget where he is. If I'm playing in a Tracer, don't be surprised. You could do stuff that we talked about, dynamic positioning, be able to rotate. So if like the Wrecking Ball is staging this way, I as an Ash might rotate my angle from here to here, right? That way I have a little bit more distance between myself and the threat. And that's even easier with dive characters like Yenji, uh, Tracer, uh, and so on, because they're a little bit slower than Wrecking Ball. It takes them a little bit of time to set up. Um, so just as long as you maintain a little bit of distance through proactive, not wait till they dive you, but proactively rotating to good sight lines, um, you can have a much easier time. They'll either lose you, they'll try to close the distance and get shot and so on. The reason why Sombra doesn't fall in that category, obviously, is because she's invisible. So you don't always know exactly where. Now you can try to guess when she's going to go in, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's mostly it. Kiriko kind of falls in that category as well. Uh, try to keep your distance. And, and with Kiriko, the big thing is Really be careful about scoping in versus a Kiriko. Um, better to just try and throw your dynamite, 80, 80 strafe, spam some shots, get to cover. Uh, try and force. If you force her Suzu, though, it's it's really good value. Dynamite for Suzu is a great trade. Um, okay. Sigma uh, kind of falls into his own category where it's like he could do a really good job spamming you out. So try to stay outside of his range. Um, also, your shield break is decent, but it, it, it's not quite as efficient as some of the other characters. Um, so he can be kind of annoying to play into. So just try to stay outside of his primary fire range. Um, and play, try to take angles to where if he's shielding you, he's not shielding your team. Um, and I think the same thing goes with D.Va to a lesser extent in terms of like that hybrid of like denying your angle, but also can dive you. Um, the nice thing about D.Va is that if you keep your distance, she is really slow compared to the other dive characters, so you can poke her HP down, force all of her matrix, and so on. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, that's, I think that's mostly it. Let's talk a little bit about Cassidy. Uh... Cassidy is just kind of bad. He has no range whatsoever. So anything that has any sort of poke, he has to find a way to close the distance with these targets, but he's not even super lethal in close ranges, not as much as he used to be. Uh, Flash, the lack of Magronade is just not all that good versus poke characters. Um, and then characters like Diva and Sigma can really deny his space. So the best way to play Cassidy into all this crap is to try desperately to close the distance on the Ash and the Widow and, 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 and Sojourn and so on. Um, because they will ruin your lives otherwise. Um, I definitely think Magrenade is not very good in those matchups, but it's better than nothing. It's free damage. You can you can animation cancel it between your shots um, as well, I believe. Chad, that's correct, right? So this thing is just close the distance. You know, close the distance. You basically play like a brawl character versus those sniper characters. So like... Yeah, it, it, you just throw it, weave it in there. So, um, Sigma and Diva is a little bit different where, like, you want to kind of, ah, man, they could do such a good job shutting down your sight lines and you can't really out brawl them. So, you do need to maintain your distance versus Sigma and Diva for the most part. You could, in theory, burst Sigma. You could, in theory, burst Diva, but mostly maintain your distance because you're not likely to do either of that. And they have really easy ways of not only punishing you, but denying your damage on them. So, okay. Let's uh, move on to Echo. Now, Echo is... <laughs> EDR is in there. Echo is a bit of an interesting one where, you know, obviously flying character means more vulnerability to hit scan because there's a chance that they are out in the open and getting shot in the face. Um, but you have lots of flexibility with being able to get up and close and dirty with characters like Ash and Sojourn. So especially if these characters don't have things like their slide, or even if they do have their slide and coach gun, if you're able to find a way to uh, poke them from cover and slash find a way to sneak up on them with stickies, you can do a pretty good job versus them. You just need to be really attentive to your positioning here. Um, and the same thing actually goes with Iyari, where you could very easily break pylon from an angle. Uh, and if she, even if she has her shift, you can kill an Iyari pretty quickly here. So a, a lot of these pokier hit scan characters, with the exception of Cassidy, uh, you, you do want to get try and get up and dirty with them. Sojourn, you can poke out as long as she doesn't have rail. 
Like you can actually out poke a sojourn if she doesn't have rail. It's when she has rail that she becomes, I would say, a soft counter. So just be careful about that. So Cassidy is a little bit trickier because Cassidy is something you can absolutely one shot. You can really one shot any squishy as Echo if you can land your stickies. The problem with Cassidy is there's just a lot more risk involved than there is with other squishies because of his mag grenade cutting down your shift and because his weapon is not a scope. So it's very easy for him to kind of keep his angle and keep and keep awareness of you. So be very careful. You can actually outpoke a Cassidy as well because of his fall off uh, being in right now quite bad. Um, but if you do find a way to close the distance, it's okay. Um, Tracer is okay versus Echo, but her verticality makes it inconsistent and you can always shift away from a Tracer. Also, Tracer is one of the few characters where like Echo poke. Echo, if you stay calm and aim your shots on a Tracer, you can you can mess her up pretty good. Um, but I would say Tracer is is okay versus Echo. Um, yeah. Uh, Diva can eat your stickies. Diva can chase you out of the sky. Just poke her out. Maintain your distance. Um, I think one of the things that a lot of Echoes kind of fall the, fall into uh, trap-wise is they feel like the old Overwatch 1 Echo where you just hit a shot, landed stickies, she dies. Um, I don't... That That's not the case in Overwatch 2 very much anymore. The extra tank HP means it's a lot harder to just nuke a tank. So you need to be a little bit more carefully about dive-bombing a D.Va. Um, Sombra... If you're out of position on an angle, she will kill you. Uh, even just virus plus shooting will kill you. Uh, she has ways she can cleanse your uh, your stickies with her translocator. Um, you know, losing your abilities by EMP is, feels terrible. Uh, yeah, there's just no zombie. Just need to be really careful. Um, Bap is too slow. Bap is very, Bap can do well versus Echo, but Bap is also uh, doesn't have as much mobility as some of these other characters and is is pretty vulnerable to them. Um, it's very easy to force a BAP cooldowns with Echo positioning well. And ironically, I actually think BAP is actually a pretty good copy, too. Um, uh, yeah, Iliari is much better than BAP. Iliari is much better than BAP because it's a lot easier to just relax and just hit your shots than it is with the BAP. BAP generally has a little bit more responsibilities. Let's put it this way. If a BAP is strictly DPSing, then BAP is scary. But BAP is not usually strictly DPSing, which opens up windows of opportunity. Um, why not Soldier? Soldier's okay if he's really good at tracking, but the fact that you're a flying character really ruins his most valuable 1v1 tool, which is his helix. So you can poke him reasonably. You can get up close to him. And if you have any sort of verticality, he he has to hit his shots. Otherwise, he like the helix makes it a lot harder. Right. Okay. You know, this list is gonna be this list is gonna be far from exhaustive for a lot of characters, but it's gonna be good general guidelines for playing into characters. Like even, like even the stuff that we talked about with the other things, it applies to Soldier too. Genji. Genji, 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 Genji. Very simple with Genji. Either you avoid Ara, avoid Echo, or you get close to them. Not very likely that you're gonna be getting close to Fara. Possible that you're gonna be getting close to an Echo. That's it. That's it. That's all there really is to it. For Moira and Zarya, uh, I know some people will be like, what about May? We, I guess we could throw May in there as well. Um, it's about playing just outside their range and abusing the fact that you have better positioning than them. The, the thing that people need to understand with Genji is that they look at, I can't kill that character, therefore I'm being countered by that character. But keep in mind, the way that you control a Genji is by either killing him or denying him space. And what that means is like, let's say the enemy backline is like rotating here. If there's an echo up here on me and she's poking me out and she's not letting me hold the high ground, that's really annoying. But what if they're on Moira Zarya? What's gonna stop me from being up here? Is Moira Zarya gonna be stopping me from being up here? Absolutely not. They don't have the mobility to do so. I could just walk around them. So the key thing with Genji is that the way you deal with your soft counters is going, oh, you can't control that position because you're slow and immobile. So I'm going to take whatever angle I want, drop on your Moira, right-click, right-click, dash out. And the same thing applies with Symmetra as well, but the reason why Symmetra doesn't even make the soft counters list is because Symmetra is way more fragile than even Moira is. So abuse angles, abuse your mobility, abuse, 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 abuse your mobility. I think we had a VOD review on this one not too long ago in Nepal, I think. I'm not sure if that was on stream or not. Um, where it's just like take and heroes like Moira Zarya May are annoying, but they just mean that you can take any off angle that you want. And if you time it well, even if they hard focus you, actually, coincidentally, the last time that I played Genji versus Zarya May Moira was in freaking Patreon pugs. You guys remember that when I had like 20 freaking deaths? Because I'm terrible. I was terrible at disengaging. I, I messed up over and over and over again. 
But with a little bit of practice, that should never happen. And the funny thing is, is we actually almost won that match because my good friends on Moira, Rosari, and May were so focused playing the game of focus the streamer that they lost innumerable fights chasing me on these crazy positions and dying to the rest of my team. So that might be your experience as Genji is like, you know, I take these angles and they still get hard focused and you still will be winning. You might be winning fights. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I like I'm missing something here. Yeah. Okay. Anzo. Do not get close to this character. Do not get close to the Sigma character either. Although you can break his shield okay. He does a pretty good job of shutting it on your sight line and so on. Do not get close to the D.Va character. You could argue that some points in time, Sombra and Tracer, when played at a very high level, also do relatively well versus this character, but they generally require some form of dive support. So I'm not going to include them because this is not aimed at the highest levels necessarily. Kapara, not a lot you can do with her. Storm Arrow is pretty good. I know there's a lot of tips about like aiming her midsection helps you to hit your shots, but mostly just there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do versus far unless she gets closer. And then you can actually mess her up. But keep your distance versus these characters. Um, again, dynamically rotate away from them as much as you possibly can. I think Storm Arrow is a big one with Genji. You really do not want to be caught without your Storm Arrow versus a Genji. And here's why. Storm Arrow is your guaranteed way of forcing deflect and forcing deflect safely. So um, what I'll do is I'll hold an angle. I'll try to rotate away from Genji. I'll scout the Genji with my Sonic Arrow so I'm not surprised when he's on me. And then I'm going to induct a shot. Storm Arrow. There is a deflect. He has to hit the deflect. Deflect cancels. I can even lunge when I think he's going to dash and then finish the kill. Because the nice thing about Storm Arrow is that if you force the deflect immediately with Storm Arrow, the deflect cooldown is shorter than Storm Arrow. You guys see that? So you'll be able to get a, your last couple of shots in there after his deflect, after his dash, and so on. But the main thing, again, is just keep your distance versus these characters as much as you possibly can. Um, and obviously, Dragon can be eaten by D.Va, but if you're smart with your timing, with your positioning on it, it's generally okay. Ball player is dependent, for sure. Ball can be annoying, um, but I think the big thing with ball is don't get lazy with your shots. Um, I think when, you know, when a ball slams, it's very easy to just dump Storm Arrow into his butt cheeks, but do if he does come out of ball form, do try to Storm Arrow him in, in the head, even if you miss more shots, because overall, as your aim improves, you'll be able to burst balls down a lot. Uh, and not to mention, it, even if you miss most of your shots, the one time where you hit all your storm arrows, you might actually kill him. And that's way more valuable. Um, but yeah, okay. Junkrat. Huh. You want to get close to things. You can't get close to this character. Avoid her. That's pretty much it. If you can't get close to Farah, get, get, get away from her. That's it. That's all there is to it. I mean, everyone loves those, those killing the Farah clips, but that's the vast minority of situations. Same thing applies with really all these characters. Um, Echo is definitely a tricky one, but the difference is that these characters you can get close to if you're really sneaky, you're good at utilizing cover. Again, if you're not peeking these characters, uh, if you're not on top of these characters, don't peek them at all. Baptiste is a bit of a different one where Baptiste is not just a character that can shoot you, uh, but also Baptiste is a character whose lamp is probably one of the best tools with dealing with rip tire. So one of the things to deal with, deal with Bap is if he has lamp, don't go for Bap. It's a lot hard. It's like Suzu, where it's actually kind of hard to lamp somebody that's across the map. Um, it's even harder than Suzu in many ways. So you can get more consistent Riptire kills by going for a target that's split from the Baptiste when he has lamp. Uh, you could go for the Bap, and I know people are like, oh, bait his lamp and then go wait for the lamp to expire, but you're risking just getting your tire shot down. So I would generally try to stay away from the Bap when he has lamp. Um, and then with, again, these characters, avoid them unless you can get close to them. Then always go for the tap combos. And these characters, they just eat your spam, and they do a pretty good job killing you if you're too exposed. Uh, versus the Sigma, uh, just try to not get spammed by him. You can still, he can't, doesn't really have a lot of mobility to stop you from taking flanks, but he can spam you out and shut you down pretty easily. Um, and then D.Va is just, really be careful with D.Va. Like, D.Va can really murk you. Um, one thing you can do with D.Va is utilize your trap. So, like, let's say you're, you're taking an aggressive off angle, um, and you know that D.Va might dive you. Um, one of the things you can do with Junkrat is use your trap, not necessarily offensively, but as an, an op a way to prevent people from pushing you. Um, so it's like, I want to hold this angle in this room. Let's say, I don't know why I would ever do this, but you, if the diva wants to push you, she has to run the risk of running in a trap. And if she's trapped, she's in serious trouble. Um, but yeah, okay. 
I think Junkrat, there's obviously a lot of things that higher levels do very well versus Junkrat, um, but we're trying to be a little bit more mid-low rank mindset as well. Arissa, maybe. Arissa, maybe, 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 maybe. But I think Arissa is a little bit easier to avoid and doesn't do as good. And it is also easier to punish in some ways. Uh, yeah, Zarya doesn't... Zarya is... Zarya should, can't consistently... Zarya is very easy to feed charge to, but she's very easy to avoid. Um, I, you could consider Zarya being tough with bubbles with your Riptire, but I think Zarya is easier enough to avoid. Uh, and bubble has more counterplay than I, I think um, um, Lamp. Okay, May. May is actually, we, we found a pretty flexible character, like in terms of how she can position on um, play versus counters. Um, it's mostly things that are really, really hard to shoot, uh, which is like a far because of how high she flies and, you know, and Kiriko because she's so skinny and shoots you in the head and crucially Suzu mailed. And the difference between mailed and Jungle Queen ultimate is that Jungle Queen in theory can hit multiple targets uh, spread out. So it's hard to Suzu. Whereas mailed's more of a, a area of effect, right? Uh, and so it's hard, much easier for the Kiriku to, to mass Suzu, at least right now. Uh, but May has a lot more flexibility. May has a lot of things that are annoying or frustrating to play into, for sure. But um, there are very few things that are like, you must swap off of May. Uh, maybe more map design than, than hero design. Okay. Um, Farah. Wow, there's a long list here. So Farah is really just about, I mean, let's just let's just pull up Farah here. So Farah is really just, hey, you utilize vertical cover to close the distance on hitscan. That's really all there is to it. Like you look at these these great far players like Izan and so on, and and really all they're doing is they're using um, they're using vertical cover like this to be able to either hit surprise rockets and hit scan where it's difficult for them to aim, and then you go back to cover, or they're using this vertical cover to do funky little things like this here. You guys did not see that where they shoot themselves up and over and they dive bomb the enemy backline, and that's where like that's how you play your on hit scan is you either don't peek it or you dive bomb it or you get over it or you peek it briefly. Because if the hitscan isn't Widowmaker, they're not going to one-shot you. Um, now, there is a, a land... <laughs> a land? What am I saying? There is a world... <laughs> there is a world where you can spam hitscan at max range here because um, you do have no fall-off with your rockets. Uh, and an Ash, even headshotting you at this range would take two shots, maybe three. And a Cassidy, obviously, you're just going to laugh at him. Um so you can't abuse hit scan at extreme ranges, but you really want to be careful about the sweet spot, right? Like I would never want to fight a hit scan at this range ever. Feels not very, very risky, but I would like to fight a hit scan at this range, right? Especially if you can get over them. And that's the key thing. It's not just about closing the distance. It's about changing your angle from being a 45 degree angle, you know, God forbid a zero degree angle to a 90 degree angle, right? You want to be shooting directly on them because it's easier for you to shoot down, especially with splash projectiles than it is for them to shoot directly up. And that's exactly what it is. With or without the Mercy, though, really both. Um, obviously, Mercy definitely affects your ability to stay on those angles for long, but you can kind of treat it like I go and hit a couple of rockets, I get a little healing, get a couple of rockets, a couple of healing. Um, but yeah. Um, Echo is not a hard counter um, because that's not going to be the rank experience of most people playing Farah. In higher ranks... 100% hard counter Echo because she can fly to match you and she's much easier in the 1v1 to win. Um, you could argue that in mid to low ranks, she's more of a higher counter even as well, but I think that was enough of a question mark to where we didn't put it there. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Now let's talk about the other hard counter here, Iliari. Uh, the way to play around Echo, by the way, either hit crazy direct rockets or honestly avoid her. Uh, it's much easier for her to, to shoot you, so try to avoid her, crucially using her concussive blast to maintain your distance. Um if there's, especially if there's a pocketed echo. Iliari. Iliari is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, where Iliari is just because she is so easy to take her own off angle. Um, now, this was pre nerf Iliari, so maybe things are a little bit different because she's been nerfed and then she's been buffed again. But I think the best thing to do with Iliari is just to take an angle on the Iliari. And if you can get an angle to break pylon, great, but just really be careful about when you peek her. Really be careful about when you peek her. Uh, it's no different from really any other hit scan, to be honest with you. I'm trying to think if there's anything unusual about any of the hit scans that we need to bring up. Sojourn is not so bad, but obviously just be careful when she has rail. Cassidy is definitely one of the hit scans where we need to be careful about getting close to him because his mag grenade uh, and because his hit fire is pretty accurate and useful. Um, Baptiste, again, be careful. Be careful with those abilities. He has ways of living uh, and then pushing you afterwards. Um, blah, 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 blah. 
Tracer, Sombra, maintain your distance whenever you can. Um, you can selectively engage on them if you have the element of surprise. One damage boosted rocket can really just really one shot a tracer. But the problem with tracer is that she can very easily avoid you and then harass your backline. So, and I would not recommend chasing tracer summer ball too much. So, I think just in general, trying to find less mobile characters to harass instead would be a better use of your time. Uh, Diva is definitely something that can be super super difficult. You can even argue Diva can be a hard counter in some maps. Um, if she can close the distance to you, not only is it about matrixing your shots, but she can harass and press you. I know a lot of D.Va players that are like, you know, like, how do I play in Nafara? Um, how do I play in Nafara because I can never reach her? But the, 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 the thing with D.Va is that, like, she doesn't necessarily have to get on top of you. She can just force you to back out. So with Farah, similarly to how we were talking about playing versus some of the other dive characters like the Echo, do try to maintain a little bit of distance from her. Um, keep yourself a little bit of space so that she can't just fly on you and threaten killing you because that's really, 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 really annoying. Soldier is the scary one uh, on some maps because Soldier, even though his time to kill is a lot lower than some of the other hit scans, the, the, the problem with Soldier is he's hard to nail down because he can reposition so quickly. So Soldier is going to be, you're going to be paying attention to where he's at at all times and trying to stay away from his sightlines or stay above him. Um, and that's mostly it. Yeah, mostly it for far. So yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Sojourn. Sojourn is actually quite hard to counter. Uh, I think she's very, a lot of flexibility versus a lot of dive characters, a lot of brawl characters. One thing is that the Hanzo and Widow, and the way to play Sojourn and Hanzo and Widow and just snipers in general is very easy. Number one, you don't peek the Hanzo Widow. Number two, you peek the Hanzo Widow. <laughs> We're breaking the rules here. You peek the Hanzo Widow when you have rail. That's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, Sojourn has an argument for being one of the best characters, sniper characters in the game, especially when damage boosted, when she has a rail. If she doesn't have a rail, she's very fragile because her weapon is very accurate, inaccurate at longer ranges. The nice thing about Sojourn, though, that a lot of people don't utilize well enough, maybe some of you guys have seen this in my VOD reviews, is that Sojourn has a very, very low cooldown grapple. So, like, let's say there's a Widowmaker back here, and I'm trying to avoid shooting that Widowmaker, and I'm, like, shooting the tank, shooting the tank, shooting the tank, I build my rail, bam. Right? I can't build rail here, so you guys have to pretend, right? And because I can shift my position so frequently and so quickly, it can give me a real advantage in sniper duels. Um, something that you see a lot of the higher ranked sojourns utilize a lot, not only in versus cyber mirrors, but also sojourn mirrors, where the slide is not necessarily used an escape route. If you're not being dove, you don't need the slide as an escape route. You can instead use it to reposition quickly. Um, so I think big thing with sojourn versus snipers is avoid peeking them until you have rail. Then utilize your uh, ability to reposition quickly to give you the element of surprise. I don't know why I'm doing quotation marks. It, it really is just the element of surprise in that duel. It's a big thing. Um, I find it easier to contest Sojourn as Winston rather than with Doom. No, I, I, think, that, I think that makes sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, Sojourn's hard, hard to counter. Soldier. Soldier is a bit of a weird one. Soldier's big advantage is that he's very, very good at medium to long ranges. Um, but the problem is, is that he gets completely outclassed by characters that are slightly better than at medium long ranges. Like Sojourn with Rail, Widow, Hanzo's Ash. There's just, like, you, you just have to get close to them. But the problem is it's not every single map has that opportunity, and that's where soldiers struggle. So let's talk about that. So Ash, Sojourn with Rail, Widow, uh, so, uh, Hanzo, Ash, whatever. You need to try to find ways to either, again, avoid their sight lines, or find a way to close the distance. Take an angle. Take because you have superior mobility than they do. Uh, I mean, Sojourn's kind of a toss-up, but like at least you're quicker on the flanks, and so you need to be utilizing that. Um, the other thing as well, yeah, I think Doomfist falls in this category as well. Actually, I, I missed that one. Um, this is far from perfect, as I said, but yeah. Um, is your helix is so important in those duels? Like, I, I think people like like the, your first reaction when you turn the corner on a Hanzo or a Widow, it's not to sit there and try and show off how your Kovax has been paying off. Your job is to freaking hit the Helix right now. Um, or, if they're not looking at you, to hit a couple of headshots and then immediately Helix afterwards. Like, your time to kill is your advantage. Um, and your time to kill is your advantage because, in theory, you have a positional element of surprise advantage. I don't know why I just fell off the map there. Um, so you need to be quick. You need to be uh, surgical. Um and you need to really, really prioritize. Like, let's say that you take an angle and they immediately look at you. Uh, okay, if it's far away, don't peek again. Just find a different angle quickly. Do it quickly, right? Um, or certainly don't peek until you have your helix again. Um, very, 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 very important. 
So the other thing is that soldier versus the extreme dive characters, tracers and uh, sombras and balls, and I guess Doomfist as well, um, although I think it's a little bit more of a mixed bag in mid to lower ranks, uh, it's the complete opposite, where you act like a sniper. You run away. The second the ball catches a sniff of your old grumpy mister, of what, what, would, what would Soldier 76 smell like? I feel like menthol and whiskey. Uh, and, and as soon as he even catches a whiff of you, you need to move. You need to move to cover. You need to change your angle um, because you will get smoked. Um, and the same thing goes with Tracer and the same thing goes with Sombra. Um, Sombra, you can kill if she messes up. Tracer, you can kill as well. But you need to maintain your distance um, because they will isolate you and they will kill you. So it doesn't mean that you can't play off angles. It just means that you're off angles. You need to be, oh, no, no, they look at me, run, rotate, find the next cover. Because actually, you're still really pretty darn fast. Uh, Wrecking Ball will catch you. Sombra can catch you. Tracer will have to use blinks to catch you, but she can catch you. But like you can create enough distance, rotate to a different angle, find cover, find health back, find a different off angle. Um, but yeah, exactly. Playing Soldier into like a hybrid comp of like ball. I played Matt's in chat, so he's going to make fun of me. But I played Soldier into, we were playing Pugs, and it was Ball, Tracer, Widow. Um, and it was like Kiriko. And it was it was miserable. I, I went, I literally, I went James Bond in the first defensive round. I went a 007. I, we actually won the match after that. We actually won the game because I am the greatest player of all time. Uh, but it was really freaking hard because it was like every angle that the Widow controlled, I couldn't peek because it was Blizzard World is so long. And then I, I couldn't take an angle because Ball and, tra it was Tracer or Genji or Ball plus a flanker were marking every short off angle. And it was like, it felt like impossible. Um, and that's exactly where soldiers are really going to struggle. Especially on maps like that, uh, where your 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 long sight, like your sniper soldiers gate kept, your flank soldiers gate kept. So whenever that's the case, it might be time to swap. Um, but if if there are flanks that you can take without flankers, you can win. If there are long sight lines that you can take without snipers, you can still win. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So Samra is a bit of a tricky one. Samra, it's like you really need to make sure that you dodge virus. A hack virus will kill you before you even get a chance to healing station if it's done properly. Um, ball, you need to make sure that you avoid slam because it cuts off your mobility. Um, Tracer is a little bit less scary. Be careful of Pulse Bomb, um, but Helix really messes her up. I, I think everyone wants to do the cute one-shot combo with Helix plus Melee, but it, it just hit the Helix. Force a recall now. Don't worry about going for some fancy combo. Um, and yeah, that's really that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, Sombra. Sombra is another tricky one where I think that it's more of a skill check for many of the people that think that there are counters to Sombra. Um, I call Torbjorn a hard counter. Um, that might be less of a case now as he's kind of fallen out a little bit of favor. But tur turret is really, really annoying. Um, you do have to break the turret. It will auto-lock on you if you come out of stealth. Um, and it takes a long time to break. Uh, it is not something that you want to commit your virus to. And overload does a phenomenal job of actually shutting your value down. In addition, you can't EMP his ultimate. Um, so I would say Torb is a top of the soft counters list, if not hard counter. Um, overload makes him very difficult to kill. I don't think you can kill Torbjorn fast enough hack plus virus before he can overload. I might be wrong with that. Um, and so that's something that you have to be aware of. Um, Hanzo, yeah, Hanzo is hit or miss. Hanzo is literally hit or miss. Hanzo, I think, is more 50-50 than it used to be because virus, if you could just hit the virus on Hanzo, he is at a real dangerous spot if he does not receive immediate support. Um, so situational. Now, the other ones are more characters that can either spy check or just really aren't scared of you in the 1v1 at all. Um, Diva's kind of a mixed bag to where she can definitely be a target you can hack and farm a little bit, but she can chase you, she can punish you, she can spy check you, she can uh, uh, she can cancel your hacks, she can dodge your EMP and then Matrix afterwards. I wouldn't say Diva's the best, but it, it is a little bit tricky. Um, Kiriko is just really hard to 1v1. Like, it's just, it's just freaking hard. She's always one headshot away from just killing you. Uh, virus is not very useful because even if it forces Suzu, she's... There's a real risk that you're just going to freaking die. She's a really, really hard to track. I, I, I just did not enjoy playing the Kiriko whatsoever. And she can Suzu your EMP and Suzu your hacks. Not to mention, when you're going for uh, an assassination on an isolated target, she can just materialize and peel off that engagement instantly. Tracer um, is really just the superior flanker when it comes to 1v1s. The only difference is that you can kind of choose your engagements, engagements and have more of an element of surprise. But when it comes to you versus her, she should almost always win that duel unless you catch her with her pants down. Um, one thing you can do versus Tracer is uh, going, if she's distracted, going for the hack into virus. If you go to hack into virus while she's distracted, you can catch her before she recalls and you can kill her. Um, 
Now, if you don't get the hack, or if the target is not isolated, like let's say I, I'm, I'm on Sombra and um, I just see a tracer just walking by, I generally don't try to go for the manual hack first unless that tracer sucks because they will blink, they will shoot you, they will recall, they will cancel that. So what I like to do instead is I'll just guarantee hit the virus. There's the recall almost instantly. And then I can either choose to take the engagement how I'm feeling mechanically or I can translocate out. And then they're really going to question whether they should chase or not because they're missing blinks and are down recall. Um, yeah, so it, it's not a good matchup for you, but it's not a terrible matchup. It's just, it's a very much a skill matchup and one that's more likely to punish you early fight and more likely to punish the tracer mid fight. Um, EMP as well really ruins the tracer, especially with the ability lockout now. Um, big, 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 big deal for tracer right now. But yeah, um, still very scary. Very scary to run into a tracer in a dark alley at night. Let's put it that way. Symmetra. Um, Symmetra, targets that you can't really hit. You know, like, you know, the far is in the sky. I think Echo is a little bit more accessible because she doesn't quite fly as high um, and, and doesn't quite have the same level of consistent burst damage. Hanzo is scary because just Storm Arrow and, and one headshot and you're just dead. Um, his dragon also can kind of just pretty much ignore your your, your wall, which is a little de detail, but it's important. Um, I think one of the things you need to be doing... Uh, versus uh, Farah is, again, try to avoid her as much as you possibly can. And I think the same thing goes, um, I guess, with a lesser extent to characters like Wrecking Ball, where it's like, if you can avoid his angle, if you can avoid, it's harder with Wrecking Ball because he's so much faster. You need to be very careful. And let's actually talk about what you can do versus some of the other characters. So let's go on the list. Avoid the Farah. Hanzo, try to peek him when he's distracted. If you can catch him when he's in the, not, he just fired a shot and he has to induct a shot while you're on top of him, then it's okay. Storm Arrow, very scary. So what I recommend with Hanzo, try to poke him out um, when he's distracted a little bit or try to dive him with your teleporter when he's distracted. Um, he can be a kill that happens instantly or he can kill you instantly. And I think that you need to wait for him to be slightly distracted like Sombra versus Tracer for you to have a heads up in that advantage. Um, Doomfist. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I like doing versus Doomfist, Wrecking Ball, and Sombra, especially Doomfist and Wrecking Ball, is I like to have what I call proactive teleports. Try to predict when they're coming in. Um, you know, spam, spam on an angle, hold an angle, whatever, and try to have a teleporter's preset up before they engage. So what I mean by that is because you're such an attractive target, you know, you're Symmetra and you're just looking beautiful and everything, sit here and be like, oh, this Doomfist is coming in. And then if he's coming from a great distance, you will have time to quickly do this and disengage before he dies. Now, you got to be quick with it because Doomfist will engage and punch you out of your teleport so that you can't actually use your teleporter. So in those instances, you might want to use teleporter's full duration. So for here, for example, I don't want to get poked out, but if I place it here, they can't break my teleporter. And if they dive any time here, I'm not only going to have a turret to slow them down slightly, but then I'm going to be able to three, two, one, there. I mean, there's the last little bit of teleporter right there. Um, so you need to be very careful about Doomfists and Wrecking Balls, but if you set up a proactive teleporter and bait yourself, then teleport when they come in. Ball is another one. If he slams you and you don't get your teleporter, you'll be too high in the air to actually teleport. Um, so it's about anticipating that pressure and then teleporting right as that pressure arrives, even if it's just a little bit over. That's your counterplay option over and over and over and over and over and over again. The good news is that if you do survive that engage, your poke and your beam versus Doomfist and Wrecking Ball is, is decent damage. It's not bad. Um, the other problem about Doomfist and Wrecking Ball is that your ultimate doesn't really help versus their ultimate as much. Mines uh, can be broken up a little bit by the wall, but it does go around it a lot of times. And then ult, obviously, Doomfist can just choose where to go. And it can be a little bit tricky for your team to shield dance in and out of it. So... Um, Sombra, yes and no. I, I think Sombra is definitely tricky um, just because virus and shoot is so easy. That is true. That is true. And the, the key thing with Sombra, well, Sombra is here, yeah, um, is the key thing with, with Sombra is that like because she can avoid you so quickly, um, she can virus you uh, and, and then really force your teleport. So I think, I think Sombra is very, falls into a very similar category with Doomfist and Wrecking Ball where it's a lot having that teleporter available when it's needed. And so if you do get pressured, you're able to quickly disengage. And yeah, the, obviously the EMP... Breaking wall is miserable. Um, I honestly, there's rooms for counterplay with that though. Like a dodging EMP may be one of the best things that you can do with Symmetra if you can do. Um, because if you're able to counter EMP with Sim wall, it can be very useful. Another thing you can do with Sombra um, is if I'm here, let's go back to our example here. 
if I'm here and I'm scared of Sombra, the best thing that I can do is have like turrets like this, where if she comes out of stealth to hack me, or even if she does hack me, these turrets immediately lock on and she has to make a choice about whether she's going to keep shooting me or deal with my turret. So one of the things you can do is again, like having the proactive teleporter, have a proactive turret as well. So when you hold these aggressive angles, these dive characters want to go for you and they have to deal with a turret plus a teleporter at the same time. That's the big thing that I would say. Um, but yeah, Hanzo is definitely scary. It's more about catching when he's distracted uh, and so on. Um, let's, uh, let's keep going. Torbjorn. I have no real solutions for you Torbjorn mains out there outside of uh, Poke versus any of these characters like Hanzo, Zen, Farah, Ash, Widow. Poke from cover. Be very careful about peeking them. Um, try and get closer to them as much as you possibly can. Um, but the hard part is that you'd actually have, a, it's really important to poke the tanks, right? You guys have seen this? Poke the Sigma, poke the Ram, poke the Arisa, poke the Rhine, poke the Zarya, poke the Diva even, poke the May, right? Poke the, you know, and so on. Maybe not so much the Sem, but uh, poke the Cassie for sure. Uh, but, 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 you don't want to be too far away peeking these guys. So playing Torbjorn is really a, a balancing act of trying to poke Tanks, DPS, and squishies, mostly tanks that are too far to contest you, but not getting your head blown off from far away by Hanzo. So you are going to want to close the distance on many of these squishies as, as much as you possibly can while maintaining distance enough to poke on the tank. And that tricky balance is why I find Torbjorn to be a very easy counter. The reason why Torbjorn is still played is because the character is very also very easy to play, so it requires some level of execution from these players to counter you. But... If they do, there's not a lot that you can do. Right, exactly. And I think there's a certain characters like the Far and the Echo that you probably should not be looking too much at all. Uh, instead, pressuring tank or taking short off angles. Like, you can absolutely annihilate a Zenyatta as Torbjorn if you get close to him. If you peek him and, and play around his Discord or don't peek him when he's right-clicking you. It's not that Torbjorn's range is bad. Torbjorn's range is just inconsistent. Whereas these guys, it's more of a skill check. Like a Hanzo versus Torbjorn, who wins at long range? Should be the Hanzo. And that's the case for most of these characters. So if you hit, let's say, if say you're spamming down main and you accidentally headshot the Zenyatta from across the map, great. Keep spamming it. Maybe you get him again. Maybe you get the kill. Um, but it's when we're on equal footing that you need to be a little bit careful. Um... Yeah, that's mostly it, mostly it. Uh, and one thing definitely for these characters is don't just throw your turret in the open. That's one of the big reasons why these characters get immediate value. Do throw your turret on an off angle hidden behind a corner where the enemy team has to commit first. I have placed turrets. The most value I get out of turret versus characters, many of these characters, these poke characters, is our turrets that actually do nothing until the fight is already well underway. Let me give you an example of that really fast. So like, let's say that you are on, God forbid, second defense playing Torbjorn, right? And your all team is all on high ground, right? What are you gonna do? Put turret up here? Put turret on this flank here? No, it's gonna get broken immediately. Guys, I'm not joking. Put your turret here. It's not gonna do anything until the enemy team eventually walks forward 15 seconds later, 10 seconds later. But you know what? It's gonna be at a really crucial point in that fight. So basically what you wanna ask yourself with turret is if there's any sort of poke, I'm okay for my turret doing nothing for the first five, 10 seconds of this fight, because it's gonna actually do something later in the fight. Because otherwise, what are you gonna do? Throw it here, it's gonna get broken before the fight even starts. I would rather have a little bit of contribution late in the fight than no contribution at all. And that's kind of like, the, that's kind of the option that you have, basically. Um, Tracer? Tracer is... Uh, a tricky one, you know. I don't know how Iliari feels. Again, this is this is this is pre-nerf, post-nerf. Maybe this is a little bit less of an issue, although that she did get buffed. But yeah, um, Tracer is all about engagement timing because the the thing with Tracer is that if your engagement timing is good, you're going in with your tank or just a, even a teeny bit later, um, or at least when the distractions happened. All of these matchups immediately feel 25, 30, 37.242 percent better if you have the draw on them, if you catch them slightly off guard, if the enemy team is as simple as looking this way and for the first clip, and I have to turn my camera to shoot the tracer, that's the advantage that you need. The area isn't too bad anymore, good to know clubs. Um, and that's the key thing. Crucially timing, coming off on good angles, right? Not getting caught in main to get spammed. And then crucially versus a lot of these targets, is more important than anything else is a mindset shift where like a lot of these targets are very killable if, okay? And so what you need to be doing is when you see these targets, 
don't necessarily always play for the one clip. Play more to hold a short angle, bait the abilities, pressure, 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 and do what you can. Now, Kiriko sucks because Kiriko, is, that doesn't even consistently work. Um, same thing to an extent with Iliari, um, but it's more of a consistent and constant distraction than it is necessarily going for the hard commit. Because the nice thing about some of these characters, I'm looking at Brigitte, looking at Lucio, looking at Diva, uh, even looking at Baptiste to an extent, is that they don't really have the capability to kill you consistently. Um, so you can play more for distraction. Now, characters like Kiriko and Iliari, yes, those are a lot more difficult. Um, one thing with Iliari, um, you can catch her uh, off guard. That's a really important one. And try to break pylon as best as you possibly can. It's lower in HP. Um, take an angle. If you can break, take an angle where you give away your position, but break pylon before you take the engagement in Iliari, high value. Big thing with Kiriko is utilizing your blink swell. So um, Kiriko is going to do this. Here's what Kiriko is going to do when she sees a tracer. She's going to do this. And she's going to completely turn her brain off. So one thing that you need to do versus an Iliari, or Kiriko, excuse me, Freudian slip, is do not, do not stand there and play that game with her. You must utilize your blinks. If you are not making the Kiriko move or crosshair, then you are screwed. The Kiriko needs to be doing this if you want to win this duel, right? In addition to that, I have heard some people talk about how, like, should I be even aiming for the head and the Kiriko? Honestly, I'm honestly not too sure. Um, that's not really my pay grade. That's so micro-intensive. I'm not honestly not too sure. But the big thing is you must utilize your blinks. You must make the Kiriko, and to, honestly, Kiriko, uh, Iliari as well, you must make the move their crosshair. You must make the move their crosshair. Right, exactly. Do not meet in a hallway where you can't blink around them. You can blink around them or engage, play with cover. The matchup is not that bad. If they can just stand there and spam and spam and spam, don't try to out-mechanics them. They have the advantage in that mechanical duel. Your time to kill is too slow. Theirs is too fast. Okay. Um, characters like Torbjorn, it's more about just like waiting until he's distracted, forcing his overload. He's really easy pulse target. Um, Brigitte is not just about like the 1v1, but she also can very easily peel off your, your pressure with armor packs. So again, a very consistent theme for most of these targets is mostly just play more for distraction and harassment and killing later in the fight rather than immediately killing early in the fight. Um, <laughs> Sly Hundo. But yeah, yeah, you shouldn't necessarily even be looking for the Kiriko duel. Yeah, I, I agree. But if it's there, it's there. Okay. Um, Widowmaker. Oh boy, there's a, there's a big list here. Um, gosh darn. Sombra, Venomine placement on the angle where Sombra wants to engage on you. So like, let's say I'm playing Widowmaker up top here. I'm not 100% certain where Sombra's going to come from, but I guarantee you it's going to be either there or there. So if I can Venomine one of those, that allows me to like at least narrow down the possibilities and gives me a gambler's chance of potentially ruining her engage. Um, the other thing with Sombra as well that I think is a little bit underrated is having the ability to quickly disengage. So like being really disciplined with your cover, right? So it's like here, I hear the Sombra start to disengage, just immediately being able to drop and drop off immediately. Like being able to, expecting her to come for you first off, Venomining one of those chokes, and then the second that you hear her decloak or even hit the virus in you, drop immediately. Drop like a rock. Find some sort of cover or some sort of high ground to disengage to as quickly as you possibly can. One other detail that I think is a little underrated as well. Yeah, do not ego with scope, right? The only time you ever ego with scope with Widowmaker versus Sombra is when A, um, you have to because you're being a spawn camp and you're not going to be able to SMG or you're going to die. Uh, so you might as well roll the dice. Or B, she's starting to disengage and you think that I can catch her on the way out. Um, the other thing you can do with Sombra as well that's really annoying, I can speak from experience here, are Widowmakers that occasionally reposition to positions I can't. So for example, if I'm here and I set up a Sombra on this staircase and the Widowmaker repositions into a different angle over here, I just wasted all this time going all this up the stairs and for me to get to this Widowmaker, I'm going to have to throw my Translocator and I'm not going to do that. That's scary, right? So with Widow, I'm not saying reposition like ADHD level here, but I'm saying if you're able to adjust your angle here and there, especially from high ground to high ground, something that Sombra doesn't have consistently mobility-wise, you can really buy yourself a lot of time. And that's really all you're playing with with Widow and Sombra. It's like, how much time can I spend scoped in with a chance of me getting a kill before that Sombra actually punches me? Um, also, 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 additional tip here. Uh, play within support LOS, obviously, but make your infrasight timings awkward. All right? Wait for the fight to bow to start. It's starting. No Hi, Sombra. 
Oh my gosh, is that not as that has killed me more than any other ultimate in this video game? Um, as somebody who put a lot of hours in Sombra during the rework, right? Like, if you do that, you will not only ruin her engage, but you will likely kill her. Um, so keep that one in mind. That is Sombra's worst enemy. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and then into Wrecking Ball, it's very similar to Sombra where you're trying to kind of rotate, but at least with Wrecking Ball, you can see him. So you have at least an idea of when he's going to engage. When he does slam you, don't try and ego this. I see a lot of people, you know, right? Widows get slammed and they're just like, oh, you know, whatever. I don't even give a rip. You know, let my supports heal me. You want to give him a little bit of attention um, and then try to disengage towards cover so that you don't get headshot. Because one of the big things is if you're playing like a Widow Mirror or Hanzo or a Zen or an Ash or whatever, is the ball will engage and then you will be looking at the ball and then you'll die to somebody else. So give him attention, but give him attention and get to cover. Shoot him out and then you're free to go, right? And find those windows when the ball's out. That's when you need to be getting value done. It's like between the ball cycles because there isn't really a great solution for wrecking ball, right? Grapple's not always consistent, although it's useful to grapple the opposite hydrants. It's not the most consistent. Venomine is not enough damage. So keep track of him. Play to live his cycle. Rotate to where your supports can see you. Um, and then when he's out, remember that he is not helping his team. And you are. That's the key thing. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then I guess for soft counters... Um, Soft counters here, Hanzo, it's mostly about, about don't re -peak a, don't peek as Hanzo where you have a disadvantage. Peek Hanzo's uh, when you know where he is and he doesn't know where you are. Don't double peek a Hanzo that has a Sonic on you. Uh, don't peek a Hanzo in super, super close range. Um, Hanzo is really worse than you in longer sightlines, even though he has no fall off because his, his shots are a lot harder to hit, projectile and also having the arc. Um, so just be smart. Respect Sonic uh, and, and find, find angles. Um, Tracer... Same thing as Wrecking Ball, but a little bit easier. Venomine is good versus a Tracer. You can track where the Tracer is, and you can grapple away from her. Similar to Sombra, she doesn't have a lot of vertical mobility, except with the case of Sombra. She doesn't want to use a vertical mobility Tracer. She doesn't have vertical mobility at all, so keep that in mind. Um, same kind of thing where I would not ego a Tracer scoped in um, unless I'm 100% sure that she's disengaging, or I have to, or I'm going to die because I'm getting spawn camped. Um, Winston, keep your distance. Uh just maintain distance. Gra grapple is really good versus Winston because if he jumps you, it's pretty easy to just uh, grapple away. And he will use his bubble and he really doesn't want to pursue. This will fail when he has primal rage, so keep that in mind. Um, Kiriko, ego her until she starts spamming at your head and doing this. Then consider your choices carefully. Um... Her, she doesn't really have any interaction with you, but she can also hold a lot of, get a lot of aggressive angles in you, so be careful. Um, Doomfist, similar to Winston, maintain your distance. Uh, I know Doomfist feels like a really, really, really fast character, but if Doomfist has to use two abilities to get to you, it is very dangerous for that Doomfist. Um, so again, a situation where you could grapple away, SMG him, shoot him down, and so on. A lot of this is just maintaining distance, don't be surprised. I think Summer is by far the most micro specific because you do need some micro to be able to win that one to one because it's so freaking hard. Um, but the rest is mostly just keep your distance. And don't ego for the most part. Um, okay. Anna, support time. <laughs> nice little arrow here. Uh, Anna, do not try to avoid throwing your cooldowns near a diva. Or wait for the Diva to be distracted mid-fight before you throw your cooldowns because Diva will eat your cooldowns and has the potential to dive you a little bit. Not a whole lot other to say other than that. Uh, I think the timing of cooldowns is really important. It's much easier to eat a nade when the honest throwing it pre-fight, right? And the Diva's just sitting there waiting for the fight to start and they're like, oh, here comes a nade. Might as well, might as well matrix it. It's when the Diva's distracted, that's when you can actually sleep a nade. It's almost impossible for the Diva to be able to be shooting a target and then go like, bah! You know, that just doesn't happen very often. Um, Sabra is... A threat for sure. I would not say a hard counter because if she makes a mistake, you can nade her and shoot her. The big thing with Sombra is using cover. Um, if you can live, like let's put it this way: if I get hacked as Ana and I'm near cover, even if I get hacked virus, I can tuck instantly to cover, live long enough for the hack expire, nade, and then sleep dart. And there's a chance there that I live that. Okay, and that's without that's with zero peel. All right. So the big thing with Sombra is just be very careful with your cover usage. Don't forget that you don't just play cover from one angle. You might need cover from a different angle. Um, and then really having a cooldown or two in your pocket to deal with her. It might be frustrating saving your cooldowns, but it's not really saving them so much as it is spending them on another offensive threat, which is the Sombra. Because if you sleep or nade a Sombra, it's a big deal for the Sombra. It's very difficult. 
Uh, Tracer, same kind of thing. Tracer, the same thing. The only difference I would say is that uh, maintain your distance because Sombra is a lot harder to track where she is. Um, with Tracer, it's a lot easier to just be like, oh, Tracer's on the angle over here. I'm going to rotate to this high ground. Oh, Tracer's coming behind here. I'm going to rotate over here. Um, and actually, Tracer is not always, unless she has pulse swam, you don't always have to be scared of Tracer. Sometimes I'll see a Tracer rotating after me and be like, oh, she's coming up here. Okay. You know, and I'm going to sit here and be like, Whoopa! you know, and I'll, Wah! you know. One of the little details I'll say for the micro with Tracer is if you do sleep a Tracer, and I guess the same thing goes with Sombra as well. Um, unless you have follow-up damage from your team, don't immediately nade. What I like to do is if I sleep a flanker that I don't have any follow-up on and they're full HP, I know that I'm not going to be able to shoot, nade her, and kill her. Oh, she's already low. Um, because uh, it takes too long, essentially. The, 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 there's no sleep animation. That's old Overwatch 1 stuff. You can't do that anymore. So what you need to do is you need to sleep, Shoot melee. She's going to recall immediately. If she doesn't shoot her again, she dies. Um, or nade her and she dies. She'll immediately recall. And now you're going to this fight not totally naked. You still have your nade. And that's crucial. That's crucial. So if you sleep a tracer without follow-up, without follow-up, do not walk away from her. Unless she has pulse bomb. Maybe even then you stay with her. Um, shoot melee, force a recall, and then so on. A little bit of micro can be very helpful with that 1v1. Uh, the longer Tracer sleeps, the more likely she's to recall exactly where she's sleeping. Yes. What about Kiriko against Ana? Um, it's more of a, I mean, honestly, Suzu dealing with Nade is fine, but it's more like ships passing in the night. She can't Suzu both sleep and Nade. Um, your ultimate in many ways is more dynamic. Um, obviously if she's spamming at your head, that's a bit difficult, but Ana is usually not spending a lot of time shooting at Kiriko. So it, it could be annoying, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite classify it as counter. Um, but the key thing with, with, with Ana is just, if you're playing Ana into Kiriko, is just don't blow both cooldowns at once. You know, if you're for, using Nade to force Suzu, that's a, that's a good cooldown trade, and you still have Sleep Dart and vice versa. Okay, um, Baptiste, honestly, not always the best support. He's Baptiste is more countered by his team's comp or the map than he is than the enemy comp. But Doomfist is just maintain your distance. Maintain your distance, um, and crucially, utilize your verticality. Position on a location where if a Doomfist engages on you, similar to the Sombra, uh, Widow versus Sombra, Doomfist engages on me, I drop. Doomfist tries to drop on me, I jump right back again. Um, the problem with Doomfist is that you are such a big hitbox to hit, and he's very good at denying your lamp value. Um, so be very careful. I mean, a lot of Baptiste is about positioning around that, and there's a, a little bit of micro here. So for example, if a Doomfist pops ultimate, don't immediately uh, drop your lamp until you're sure that he's landing on you. If he's landing on you, drop the lamp, take the damage, then immediately shift because it will break the lamp and you need to immediately shift so that you go right back to full HP. But the big thing is more than anything else, maintain your distance, maintain your distance, shoot, 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 drop, disengage, use cover, re-engage on high ground again. Um, never use exo boots in L LOS of a wide, a widow? Yes. Um... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Some of the other stuff can be annoying with Baptiste as well, but for the most part, I think Doomfist is the big one. There's always ways of easier ways of counterplaying other characters. Um, yes, I will say that's a good point. If you are going to get punched into a wall, lamping the wall means that he can't punch you out of the lamp. So if ironically, whereas a lot of characters don't want to get punched, like Doomfist doesn't want to punch people in the open. He wants to punch people in the wall. But Baptiste is actually one of those characters. Um, where getting punched into a wall is actually not that bad because that allows you to actually get lamp value. Um, okay, let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, Brigitte, pardon the scuff picture at the bottom here. Um, characters that you can't reach are very difficult. Uh, you either want to deny dive characters or you want to actually kind of pressure squishies. But the problem is there's characters here that can either completely avoid you, like Farah and Echo, or if you do get close to them, uh, Ash as well, can actually ruin your day. Um, and I think Reinhardt, Ram, Bash, and Junkrat fall into that category. So here's what you do. Avoid Farah and Echo. Avoid them. Avoid them. Ram, Rhine, Bastion, Junkrat, also avoid them. Also avoid, keep your distance. Also avoid them. That's, that's pretty much all there is to it. There, there's really not a whole lot here. Like You have to find a way to go around these targets. Um, one of the details for characters like Ram and Ryan and, and even Junkrat to an extent that might want to close the distance on you, um, it's going to be utilizing that whip shot to create distance and also making sure that you're managing your, your your shield bash well to make sure that they don't just throw vortex on you and run you down or pin you and just run you down. Whip shot plus shield bash should be enough versus every character to be able to maintain distance to keep yourself safe. And then characters like Ash, Farah, and Echo, it's more about finding cover and sightlines where it's not so easy for them to spam you out. 
No, she cannot. She cannot hack through Brick Shield. Um, okay, Idiari, characters that can out sniper makes it really difficult because unlike a lot of the other supports, she has no utility to provide generally. So a Widowmaker can really deny those sight lines easily. Uh, you know, she just wants to poke and pull an angle and poke, but uh, snipers can make that quite difficult. Uh, Widowmaker being the key one. Um, so the, with EDR, it's really just avoid the Widowmaker sight line unless you're close to her. You can actually kill a Widow pretty easily if you can get close-ish to her, so keep that in mind. I also think that when we talk about soft counters, characters that can either eat her ultimate, Diva's one of them, Sigma's one of them as well, as well as pressuring her. Um, you really want to pop your ultimate and shoot it away from Diva. Remember, Diva's Matrix is not 65 meters long, so you can always shoot an ult the target that's not near the Diva. Um, and also, you're really quite bad at killing Diva. So I would not spend a lot of time shooting Diva. A lot of ironically, like there are a lot of supports, even like Ana for, for Front Crying Out Loud, I think has like competitive DPS on a Diva. Um, especially considering how hard it would be to hit a headshot. So don't spend a whole lot of time shooting these tanks. Shield breaks bad. You can't headshot a ball. Diva's headshot hitbox is really hard. So it's like it's really hard to like actually do anything good to them. And the characters like Wrecking Ball can easily break your pylon and then pressure you and the ultimate is irrelevant to them. So avoid these characters. Try to shoot around them, pressure their backlines, cut off their support as much as you possibly can. If the Diva does die of you, make it be a hard commit. Disengage with your shift. Wrecking Ball... Honestly, you can pressure him as much as you possibly can, uh, but the best thing you can do with Wrecking Ball is try to live his engages and find value elsewhere. There's not a whole lot that you can do versus Wrecking Ball. Um, yeah, there really is not a whole lot a lot that you can do. Sombra's not a soft counter. No, no, I don't think Sombra's a soft counter. There's too much risk for the Sombra engaging. Um, Sombra can virus your pylon, but that does mean that she can be shot, which then means that if you're even hitting a body shot, it means that the Sombra has to disengage and reset. Um Pylon is good versus ball, unless the ball can break the pylon pre-fight, which is very possible. Um, but yeah, I think Samra, I think, keep in mind, this is not 100% accurate all the way through. This is more low to mid ranks. It's just general guidelines. So keep a distance, keep a distance, avoid these characters. Don't spend too much time punishing them because there's not a whole lot that you can do. Um, a single without shield is, is your damage is decent versus him, but yeah. No, Genji's not a soft counter. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think this goes without saying. No, Genji, if, if your spam is breaking pylon, then the EDR is messing up. Because either her pylon should be safer, or if you're taking an angle to break pylon, she should be shooting you in the face. Uh, Lifeweaver. Can't interact with Farah at all. GG's. Your abilities also suck versus Farah. GG's. Pedal, life grip. Life grip's not even that consistent. Um... Yeah, you have no way of contesting the far at all. So, good luck. I will say, uh, avoid the far spam as much as you possibly can. Try to rotate away from far. It's easier to deal with a far that's farther away than it is up close. Um, and you're... That's pretty much it. There's really nothing else to do. Just keep away from far. Keep away from far. Avoid it. Um, soft counters. Anything that can snipe you out from range, because Life Weaver is one of those characters that doesn't have a ton of range, but he likes to play range. He does his weapon is his hitbox is big. His weapon is not super consistent. We'll talk a little bit about that. There is some good things about that. Um, so you want to kind of keep your distance, but then things that if you keep your distance, you might get smoked by some of these sniper characters. So try to find an angle to where you're maintaining distance, but you're not having to peek the backline. So for example, if we go into the practice range here, if I go pick Life Weaver here and I just roll out on this high ground here. Right, I'm like going to be looking at the. Uh, oops, that's not where I wanted to be. I'm going to be looking at this here, um, and I've got like you know all the distance here to be able to heal and damage and whatever. But like, what if say there's a sniper here? I might want to maintain my distance without peeking that sniper, right? And I think that's the important thing, though. Um, it's just don't try to not peek the sniper. Now, there's one exception to this rule. Um, not really one exception, but your spread, your fire has no spread for the first couple of shots, right? So you can see here it's really tight, and there's no fall off either. So I like to do this sometimes when the Widow or Ash is really far away and they start dealing with fall off, right? Uh, Widow can't one shot me all the way from the end of circuit right off now. And I have gotten several kills as Life Weaver uh, and a lot of pressure doing this. And you can be a little bit of a rat if you're playing outside of their fall off range. So you can be a bit annoying to the characters. Now, obviously, Hanzo doesn't have any fall off there, so be careful of that. Um, but yeah, same thing with Yari. She can kind of mess you up. Um, your ultimate is decent at countering hers. Uh, it's not a counter, but it does give your team a much bigger HP buffer to Sunburst. Um, and then Echo is, again, another character that I would just really keep your distance from. It's very hard to shoot her. She could melt you very, very easily. 
Um, use your lunge quickly to create distance, to create space. Uh, and then either poke these guys at extreme range or don't peek their sightlines at all. Another reason why these characters are very difficult to deal with is that life grip, it's hard to life grip a character that's one shot. So keeping that in mind, you might just accept the fact that your life grip is going to get a little bit less value or you might focus on the other members of the enemy team that you might life grip instead. For example, I can't life grip a widow headshot, but if they're playing Ryan, I will life grip a pen. So I'm not going to worry about the widow headshots. Those are just going to happen, but I'm going to worry about the Ryan pen. Uh, okay. Lucio. Uh, Lucio is pretty flexible. More of a map situational choice, compositional situational choice for sure. But not a lot of things I can uh, directly deal with Lucio all the time. Soft counter is Cassidy. Very, very difficult to deal with that character. He's got 225 HP. The roll creates distance. Uh, the flat, the, the mag grenade ruins you. Um, you know, it, it, there's so many things that he doesn't have to scope in. So the big thing with Cassidy is it's actually quite a good 1v1 for you if he's distracted and if he doesn't have abilities. So this 1v1 goes from being a soft counter to being like, honestly, you can soft counter him because of how fat his hitbox is if he doesn't have mag grenade, if he doesn't have roll, and more importantly, if he's distracted. So if I'm shooting over here, shooting over here, and I use my mag grenade, and all of a sudden I get dive bombed by a Lucio, I, you, 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 can, you can get the kill there. You can get the kill there. Just be very careful when he does have these abilities um, because obviously if he's not distracted, it's very easy to just kind of like throw it at a Lucio and hit a couple of shots and then, you know, he's dead. Um, one other thing as well is if you're getting super saucy with your, with your wall riding, be careful about wall riding when he has high noon. Uh, a smart casty will be like, oh, what is he doing up there? High noon, and, and then you die. So pay, pay attention to the, the, the cover usage. Pay attention to uh, when you do pressure at Cassidy, and you should be okay. Um, Soldier is a soft counter to Lucio. I don't find Soldier to be a soft counter to Lucio. Um, if the you, it's too if the so Lucio is good with movement and staying on walls, it's hard to get consistent uh, helix value, and you can also boop him out of his healing station. Lucio doesn't really have any easy one v ones. Um, they're all skill, skill based, but I would not find Soldier to be necessarily the hardest one. Um, I'd find a Hanzo to be actually harder than a Soldier, in my opinion. Um, Okay, Sombra is a tricky one. Sombra is, again, kind of goes into the Cassidy thing where it's like you need to be near cover, you need to be on a wall to where uh, one of the things with Sombra is that, again, it's going to punish bad Lucios more than it's going to punish good Lucios um, because a Lucio that's on the floor is going to get hacked easier, it's going to get virus easier, it's going to get killed easier. Whereas a Lucio that's even on the wall or anywhere near cover, if you get hacked and you just freaking drop, it's actually kind of hard to track you, not to mention even virus you. Uh, and then by the time you hit the bottom, you're able to immediately amp up back to safety. Um, so just keep that in mind. Characters like Cassie and Sombra are going to punish poor positioning, and that's the key thing. There are ways of counterplaying. You just need to be very, very careful. And then things like EMP, that's a situation where you can absolutely um, try to dodge it by utilizing that cover and then beat it. And I actually think beating EMP is better than it used to be. It used to be really good, and then it was really bad. And then now it's really good again because EMP has the three-second ability lockout time. Um, and so trying to do that as much as you possibly can is, is really good. May, mm, May, no, 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 because May is a hard target to kill, but remember, it's not strictly the 1v1 when it comes to counters. May is also very good at, not, you can deny uh, May value uh, with uh, boop on your tank or anything else, and also amp speed is really, really good into Blizzard. Um, yeah. So yeah. Lucio's, it's more his, his, Lucio's counters are more his ability. That's his counter. If you're good with Lucio, you're going to have fewer issues unless it's the map. Um, but yeah. Okay, Mercy. Uh, Mercy struggles with Sombra. Virus and shots can be really difficult for Mercy. Um, key thing with Mercy to deal with Sombra is very similar to Widowmaker, where you're constantly slightly repositioning yourself. The good news with Mercy, and Mercy has an easier, an, an easier time doing it than Widowmaker. Because the verticality is the key to success. Because it takes Sombra so freaking long to get up here, and then you drop, and then you take another high ground, and you rotate around like that. If she hacks you while you're GAing, then it's very difficult. You know, we talk about like abusing GA spam too much. That's something that I talk about in a lot of my reviews. Don't just GA for the sake of GAing, right? However, versus a Sombra, it might not be a bad idea. Because if you're constantly GAing and constantly repositioning, it becomes much more difficult to hack and also, more importantly, more difficult to virus. Um, so Mercy is a very fragile character versus Summer, but there's lots of counterplays if you can move quickly and move unpredictably, it could be hard for the Summer to lock you down. Um, 
I would not recommend generally Valkyrie uh, EMP unless you see that your team is stabilized, then it's probably okay. Uh, but just don't don't sit still. Don't sit still. Uh, okay. And then let's keep going here. Uh, soft counter, ball, same kind of thing. Avoid him. Use your verticality. Ball, if you can avoid his slam and avoid his grapple because you're utilizing verticality and cover, it's going to be good. Tracer. Honestly, a lot of these ca- counters are, are, are dealt with with a little bit of good movement. Um, good cover usage, uh, ability to create distance between yourself and them and create verticality as well. Um, that's the key thing. Uh, and then again, one of the key things when you're dealing with counters, dive counters, is just don't be surprised. Sombra, you, you're going to be surprised. You can't stop her. But Ball Tracer Diva, you can see him coming. You can see him coming. So please don't be surprised. Please don't be surprised. If you see them coming from the left side and you're still on the left side and haven't taken that opportunity to rotate away to the right, you see them on the right and you haven't taken that opportunity to rotate on the left, that's your fault. Creating distance buys you time. And that's exactly what you need when you're playing Mercy. Okay, um, Moira. Moira, uh, bit of an odd one here. Moira feels really good in a lot of 1v1s, but these are just like the 1v1s that she doesn't feel that good at. We talked about 1v1s not really being that important, for not being that important for some supports, but I do think Moira is one of those characters because she leans into that DPS 1v1 mindset a large majority of the time. Um, you do need to kind of like look at how favorable these matchups are. Character like Torbjorn, he could just spam in your general direction. It takes forever to kill him with his armor. It takes forever to kill him with his overload. His turret's kind of annoying. You don't have a way to break his turret. Um, I would say generally avoid him unless he has overload or unless somebody has beaten him in the 1v1 or chipped down his armor or taken his overload. Uh, it, just not a great 1v1 for you. Uh, it could be a little bit tricky. Um, not something that you would totally avoid, but it's just a little bit tricky. Cassidy, Hanzo fall into similar categories. The difference between those two is they are a little bit more fragile than Torbjorn, but they're also a little bit higher risk in some ways. Hanzo is more of a movement slash skill check, especially attractive if he doesn't have his Storm Arrow, so keep pay attention to that. And the same thing goes with the Cassidy with the nade as well. Um, I know some of you guys might be like, oh, I can just fade the nade. But the problem is that then once you fade the nade, you have committed if you're sticking in that 1v1. And it's not exactly the most favorable cooldown trade either. So movement, try to catch him when he's distracted. Um, otherwise, find other targets, find other distractions. Ball is just total waste of time. Ball can't really kill you. You can't really kill him. But that's more of, he's still going to be able to force your fade and force your heal orb. And meanwhile, you're not going to force any of his things really. Um, avoid him if you can. Avoid him if you can. Farm some HP off of him and then try to go back and find value. Elsewhere. Ball is really, really annoying as Moira. Um, Roadhog, same as thing. You can't do anything to him. Stay away from him. Um, he can kill you even easier than Ball can. Uh, your ultimate is worthless versus him. Uh, just keep your distance. Find value elsewhere. Bastion as well. Bastion, um, the only reason Bastion is not a hard counter uh, is because his poke is not consistent at forcing you out. He has to commit turret, but when he's in turret form, there's nothing you can do. Really. Um, very difficult. Talk to the Tracer Master. Skill check. Yep, skill check for sure. Skill check, but uh, it's actually, even in higher ranks, it's still not easy for the Tracer. Um, so I would say I would never put Tracer into a soft counter situation. So more it's all about, these are characters that are really difficult for, for you to either kill or can very easily kill you. Uh, so keep that in mind. Characters like Widowmaker or Zenyatta can 100% kill uh, a Moira, but they, Moira can also 100% kill them. And so that's why they're not in this list. So for Moira, it's going to be about avoiding these un- unless they have moments of fragility, and then you can. Um, even a Bastion without turret form is killable with damage orb. It's not easy, but it's killable. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, all right. Uh, Zenyatta, chat, are we almost done? Zenyatta. Uh, Sombra, very easy to kill. Uh, get, very easy to get killed if she catches you off guard. If you're super tight with your cover usage, if you have a health pack, if you have a corner, uh, or, or and you're expecting her to come in, you can punish Sombra. She is one headshot and then a discord plus headshot away from being dead. Um, so just keep that in mind. Trance does pretty well versus EMP nowadays, uh, considering how important a powerful EMP is with a three second lockout. So if you can dodge EMP or react to it, it's really good. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But but Sombra, again, it's going to be a lot of these are just going to be position, punishing your positioning or lack of mechanics. Um, I would not say that Sombra has a disadvantage in the duel. She definitely has an advantage. But there, when you die to a Sombra, most of the time, unless you're being spawn camped on like Flashpoint, right? Then that's understandable, difficult. There's always going to be, oh, I should have been close to that corner. And keep in mind that cover is contextual, right? So when if I'm playing, if okay, I'm screw it, I'm Zenyatta. This is Zenyatta, guys. This looks just like Zenyatta, right? If I'm playing cover here and a summer comes from me to here, I could still utilize this as cover, right? But if I'm playing cover like this here and a summer comes from me from behind, I'm just dead. There is no cover here. So you kind of have to be creative with the positions that you take and in many ways try to predict where that summer is going to be coming from. You might be like, oh, it's so hard. Well, guess what? She's playing summer, you're playing Zen. You're going to have to learn to deal with it. And that's the way you need to counterplay that. Same thing goes with Tracer. Um, 
where it's a little bit like that, but it's also like because Tracer is a little bit noisier, um, you can kind of rotate away and also far as well to maintain distance. Uh, Tracer is actually a, quite an easy 1v1 if you're able to maintain distance. Very scary for her, uh, especially with cover and the 225 HP. So just keep that in mind. Farah, the reason Farah is a soft counter, I find is because it's very easy. You're very slow. It's very hard to rotate away from her. So utilize cover or rotate away from her. Um, yeah, mostly it. Mostly it. Okay. Um, yeah, maintain your distance as your shots. Use cover. I mean, it's really, the, the Zenyatta is probably one of the more dull ones that we've talked about because there's not a lot of ton, juicy, saucy. I mean, there is one little thing where like, be careful about discording a tracer if she's right next to cover because she can use that wall to, to take off the discord. So just be aware of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that like, um, I think like most of this is just pretty much fundamentals and, and good luck with that. Yeah, Symmetra doesn't really counter anybody, I don't find. Symmetra counters anybody.